Hello, guys. This is uh, session six of Sin and Skullduggery, and it's been a couple of weeks, but we're back. And uh, just to give you guys a quick recap of what happened last session. Um, so basically, what happened was our party, Overshadow, uh, discovered the location of their enemy, uh, Zix Grimdale, and headed their way to assassinate him. He was hiding out in a brothel, and on their way to the place, uh, our fighter warlock, Vendetta, receives a vision from the goddess of weapons, Rico Bishop, and he reveals to her the secrets behind Zix Grim Jail and how to defeat him. It's revealed he was a vampire and that one way to murder vampires is by dousing them with running water uh, as the final blow. So Overshadow devises a plot to kill him using the decanter of endless water and uh, they get into a huge fight with him after breaking into uh, the brothel he was hiding and uh, there was a huge battle across the city as well between the undead and uh, the regalia syndicate. But it all was put to an end when Vendetta murders him. And because of that, Overshadow gains a boost in the reputation. They are one of the most feared bounty hunting groups in Taran. And uh, yeah, um... They all were also able to gain allies from the uh, Order of the Golden Rook and also from other uh, crime families because they were all impressed by what Overshadow did and some are afraid of them and don't want to mess with them. So that's what happened. And now, ever since then, 10 months have passed and it is no longer... 1,055 years after Pandemonium. It is now 1056. And we are now at the beginning of Green Sprout once more. And uh, unknown to Overshadow and to Skullduggery Island, various things have been happening across the planet. Uh, Exoria was attacked by uh, hybrid dragons. The Gauntlet of Gathering's Corruption was exposed, and uh, uh, Kaylora's new rulers were uh, put into power. And uh, all these news are slowly reaching to Skullduggery Island and shifting the uh, shifting different like alliances and powers and a lot of criminal uh, plans, you know. So, yeah, we will see how this will be affecting the island. And another thing as well within the 10 months is that uh, the Heaven Sphere drug that Overshadows encountered in the past five sessions has been spreading across Taran, uh, unfortunately, and causing other problems. So this session, we will find out if Overshadow will discover any... Uh, answers to to this drug and yeah this will be now in the present day and i'm gonna send you guys the album <coughs> link forgot about that but also uh, during those 10 months overshadow has uh more than half of the group has gone their separate ways uh due to their uh increase in reputation some of the members were confident in going about to other places by their own uh as of now um homer teach and trandafira are hanging around in the island while vendetta bright moon vigil and dust bunny are elsewhere so uh that is what's currently happening with Overshadow. But what happens in the session, hopefully it's enough to drag the whole gang back together. And uh, for the rest of you guys, uh, do you see the Albert link? Yeah. I'm still connecting. All right. All right. 
Tem que fazer. Calma, calma. Ok. So, just, uh, uh, ju just in case the map's loading, the we are here again back in the Spearhead Club, the club that crime boss Nikolai owns. And uh, as of now, the place is actually uh, packed, but, you know, NPC tokens, whatever, who cares? They're there, they're people, but who cares? And then... Uh, there's some new stuff added to the Spearhead Club, if you guys hadn't noticed. There is now a swimming pool installed, and uh, it is very impractical because it's located right in front of the entrance of the club. <laughs> so, uh, but you know, Nikolai thought it's classy, it's cool, and people would love it. And people do love it. There are people swimming in the swimming pool, but there are some guests that you know, walk into the club and then don't notice the pool and then they fall into the pool and then, Unfortunate. you know, yeah, very sad, very sad story. <sighs> but yeah, uh, you guys are located at the top part of the map. Uh, it's just the three of you. Uh, we have Homer, Tej, and Trandafira. And uh, you guys can, uh, you know, Let's see here. You guys can uh, role play and hang out for a bit if you'd like. I, I don't think I don't think that pool was uh, thought correctly. Oh, there goes another one into the pool. They didn't even see it coming. Uh. And then Place Jed. From the Jed and then and then Jed looks to his father Nico and like. You see, Dad, this is a really terrible decision. Like, of all the places that you could put the pool, like, putting a pool in the first place was so stupid, but you had to put it right in the entrance, and then Nikolai's like, you know, I think it um, it gives character to the club, and also it um, it's like an icebreaker. Like, people fall into the pool, and then people cheer, and then, you know, it... It boosts up the party mood, you know. So I think I think it's a brilliant idea. Let's, let's just hope any drunk people who fall into the pool don't die from drowning. But just in case, we have sober people walking into the club. Maybe add a big sign right in front. Maybe just if they can't read, then that's on them. But do not worry. worry. Nice. Don't worry. The pool is like three feet long. It's like you know, like you'd have to crawl to properly drown. So uh, I think we're good. I think. So it's a it's a pond then. Have some dwarven and uh, halfling customers that come here from time to time. Yeah. They might drown. They might drown. Oh, you're right. You know, I think I should uh, rethink the pool. Maybe. Maybe I shouldn't make it three feet. Maybe like one feet. But then it'd be a pond. That is then, quite oh. literally a pond. That is barely a pool for me anyway. Ah, well. I will dwell on that later. And then <laughs> uh, Jed also um, comes up to the three of you. Speaking of which, guys, uh, there's like a really important question I need to ask you. Like, uh, oh, by the way, guys, uh, in the ten month time skip, Jed actually went with his mother, our mass bishop, and spent time with the bishop family for some time. And now he just came back a few days ago, and he also has a doctorate degree. He's now a proper medical doctor because the last time. He was just a back alley doctor with no title. So now he has an official title. So no one can be like, oh, you're not a real doctor. So, <laughs> yeah. I Very, think... um, be proud to him, you know. <laughs> huh? uh... Well, is that common knowledge for us now? <coughs> yes, it's common knowledge. Nikolai's like, anyway, Jed is, I'm so proud of my son. He is now a proper doctor. I mean, not that he was not a real doctor in the last 10 months, but... He has a title now, and no one can dispute that he is not a real doctor. So he wasn't real. 
No, he is a real doctor. He he took care of us. Remember when we were all injured? So and he helped yeah. Homer with the with the healing healing potion thing. So that makes him a real doctor. But now that with the title, it is an undisputed fact. So I never disputed it for for a minute. But hey, congratulations! That makes two of us. But granted, I'm not a medical doctor. And Judd's like, yeah, I heard. It's uh, it's really great, you know, like. Well, anyone could be a doctor as long as they put the work into it, you know. Then, uh, uh, anyway, so <clears throat> guys, uh, I was hoping to ask you guys this question. It seems to me that, uh, your items have been lying around for some time, and I was, uh, well, Nico. Well, my dad told me to tell you this, guys, but some of your weapons have been laying around and it's kind of undecided who keeps what. So, And then he puts these the items in front of you. He puts like the bag of holding, the blasphemy blade, the gun holy avenger, and uh, all the other loots that you got. And then he's like, uh, Jed asks you, we just wanted to know like who exactly holds the bag of holding among Overshadow. I could be holding on to the bag from now on. Yeah. Let the Hey you got a new haircut. Nice. Oh thank you. <laughs> and then uh what about the what about this gun, this gun holy avenger? It's a pretty cool weapon. And then, uh... does, does... I don't know how to use a gun. Does does Bunny know how to use a gun? Oh he does, but he's not here. Shit. Oh, Love even it. even Vigil is not here. Ever since he got Hostess pregnant, he just you know up and left for a while. He... Wait, what? Oh yeah, haven't you heard? He knocked up Hostess like several months ago. That is that is a way. That is mm, that is a way to um. <laughs> that is a way to describe it, but sure. <laughs> And then Nicola's like, yeah, I am surprised that she is, you know, she got pregnant. I mean, didn't she die? Like, imagine <laughs> getting, wow, you know, like life and death, it's a cycle. <laughs> yeah. Um. Any, anyway, and then uh, Nicola tells you guys, we, besides the point, we have uh, a bunch of guests that are coming and uh because we have a job for you guys and uh, actually we are working in tandem with uh the corponi crime family and the organization wager we they're sending a bunch of agents to work with us on a job and they should be coming here anytime soon uh, for uh for those of you that are uh, unaware, the Corponi crime family is, they are an uh, arms dealing uh, organization and uh, they have a bunch of branches around there and they have one here in the island as well uh, a couple months ago. And uh, Wager, on the other hand, is, uh, it's, well, it's a, uh, how do I put it? They are an international group of spies who work in covert places like pubs, shops, and marketplaces. And they're mostly halflings, but uh, they have a bunch of other races as well. They're not like very discriminatory. So uh, we'll be working with those people and uh, we should be on our uh, best behavior. Okay? Okay. It sounds like we always do bad things. No, I'm just communicating, you know, like, like the last time you guys worked with someone was like several months ago. So I just thought, you know, brush up your people skills, you know, and, and stuff like that. Brush up your people skills. Granted, thank you. And then, yeah, uh, you see two individuals walking into the club, but they all are uh, walking towards you guys from separate directions. And uh, 
I would like to start with uh, Sean. Please, Sean, describe to us um, what your character is doing as he approaches you guys and what he looks like. And anything else we need to know about? Oh, sneaky, sneaky. I thought you were just a spectator. <laughs> <laughs> um, har, uh, you see a... Well, number one, you hear the sound of, like, rubber boots that are super wet, squeaking on the floor. And then yeah. you hear... Holy shit, did you guys know there was a massive pool here? There's no signage, no nothing. It's just one minute, you're on firm land. And then the next minute, you're three feet deep in what feels like endless water about to drown. Um, and then in comes to view like a middle-aged halfling man. He's got like, even though he was, <laughs> he fell into the pool. Uh, he has suavely quaffed hair. He's got warm, friendly brown eyes. He's wearing a red coat with elaborate embroidery and colorful threads. He's got a strange loot strapped to his back and he's holding a comically large cigar even though it's it's sopping wet. Nice. All right, uh, there you are. Um, do you have anything to say to the party? Or you guys, how do you react? Is it, where, where are my manners? Allow me to introduce myself. I am Harlan Taraboti of the Wager Organization. They send their regards. You may call me Harlan. Howdy there, Harlan. What brings Hello? you to this part of the world? Well, the, uh... It's a long story. It involves... Um... A very badly placed wager. A... Person that I... Assume was a shifter. And, um... Other... Things. Basically, I lost a bet, and now the wager sent me here to do their business. And then Nikolai says, and that shifter is me. I want to bet against them, and I told them you have to work with Overshadow. So, yeah. And in exchange for that, the debt is settled. So, yeah, that's the story. Told you that pool was dangerous. See, he fell in. Okay, I, I will admit to my mistake. I am sorry. I will do something with the pool. <laughs> and, and then, you know, it's very uh, dangerous for halflings and dwarves. I know. That was very inconsiderate of me. I did not take into account that short people would almost die in the pool, and that is on me. And it is extremely problematic, and I apologize. And I should... Apologies accepted. Time. You yeah. you owe me a cigar. Thank you. I will give you a cigar. He, he, <laughs> he ducks down the bar and like gives you another comically large cigar. <laughs> This is uh this is Nikolai by the way. He's the guy who won the bet against you and he's also like a minor crime boss in in the island. So, yeah. And while that is happening, another the other person in the other direction comes and Wayne, please describe to us <clears throat> what Big Eddie is doing and what he's saying. You guys oh. see a uh, tabaxi, spotted tabaxi, kind of looks like a cheetah. And um, he's got in his one hand a like a like a bag of snacks. Uh, probably his favorite are like uh, dried fish, little dried fish. <clears throat> and he's walking through the club. He's like chewing and eating. And like he, you know, he's very charismatic or at least he thinks he's charismatic and says hi to everyone. Hey there. Hey, and then uh, he, he makes his way over here to you guys. Oh, he's wearing this like uh, one piece purple track suit. And he is, you know, uh, a bit on the heavier side. He waves to Nikolai. Hey, uh, Nikolai. A nice job yeah. with the pool over there. I like it. It's a big bang up job. It's a great, great idea. I think we're gonna do this over at the uh, Corponi Mansion. I'll tell Ricky. Uh, I'll tell Ricky about it. It's a pretty cool idea. Yes, I know. I, I I told them it was a brilliant idea, but they're putting arguments against me about putting a pool in front of the entrance. <laughs> but you know, like yeah, put put walls around. Yeah. Like, oh. But then, but then, like, how how do people fall in? Well, that's the free entertainment right there. 
exactly they do not understand but it is okay i will uh, have to deal with it i mean fine if you don't want to consider workplace hazards and you know issues with hr it's not my problem ah, workplace hazards this guy no. up top <laughs> then he like raises a hand way higher harlan cannot yeah harlan cannot reach it <laughs> Anyway, so, uh, Nikolai, uh, so, uh, Ricky told me to come over here, uh, like, uh, <coughs> the, the, the job, and, uh, I gotta observe you or something. I, I, I didn't want to do it, but, uh, Ricky was insistent, so, uh, here I am, I guess. By the way, do you got any of those, like, your specialty crackers that you used to have? Do you still have those? Oh yeah, I still have uh, the specialty crackers that you're talking about. Jed, go get them. It's like, yes, dad. And then he, he moves behind in this area. That's Jed? Yeah. Whoa, yes, Jed, me. get over here. Get, let me get a good look at you, bud. Okay. Wow, you're Maybe all grown up. Them. You're all... Sheesh, uh, Nikolai, this... Your 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 kid is getting... Uh, doing, uh, doing like workouts and shit, huh? Yeah, yeah. It is, uh, you know, it is. It's a natural thing that runs in the family. We're all very gorgeous beings. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, l d d that's really good. Good, good job. Uh, keep out, uh, keep at it, Jed. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Big Eddie. <laughs> and then he, he he gives you the crackers that you're asking for. <laughs> Yeah, so now Big Eddie has like the the dried fish in one one paw and the crackers in his other paw, and he's just you know, uh, he just he just th uh, like uh, gorgeous on the the snacks. Uh, Jack tells you, uh, you kind of re you kind of remind me of a person I used to know who also snacks on a lot of things before. Yeah? But... Who's that? Maybe I know him. Uh, you heard of a man named Ronin? Has, has Eddie? The no, he does not. Uh, name doesn't ring a bell. No clue. Nope. That's, that's okay. That's okay. And then he goes back. And while, um... While while you guys were actually talking, Nikolai actually approaches um, Trandafira, and uh, Nikolai um, takes out a newspaper actually, and then he shows it to you, uh, Trandafira, and he points something at the newspaper, and he tells you, "By the by the way, Fira, I always wanted to ask you this question, but I didn't know if it was gonna be like a racially charged thing to ask, but." Does this person look like you? Do you know them? And then he points at this picture in the drawing. And the drawing, Trandafira, I mean, the image is an image of your brooder, Cassandra. Oh. In fact, yes, I do know them. That is my brother. <gasps> no way, really? Mm, why? That's so cool. They, it's uh, it's something about the gauntlet of gathering over at Gamaril. It's actually a pretty wild story. You have, have you heard of it? Mm, just glimpses here and there, but it's good that he, it's good that he's doing some great things. I haven't I, seen him in a while, though. I'm not sure about that. Apparently, he's with an adventuring party called the Pancake Club, and. Who the hell calls themselves that? <sighs> oh, you got really? pancakes too, Nikolai? No, 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 no. There is this adventuring party that calls themselves the Pancake Club. And I'm like, well, what? Do, what, what? What is going on? Do they sell pancakes? <laughs> I don't know. I... It certainly does stick to the brain, though. If you That's want some sure. smart marketing. It sure does. the description of this particular bugbear, he will probably try to smell like lavender around you in order to mask the scent of death, but I don't think pancakes smell like that. 
So this leads me to believe that he did not make an input in the name. Oh, all right. Well, you know, more power to them. Apparently, they also killed the governor. So Ooh. I think I'm not sure. This newspaper is kind of vague, and I just scanned some of the... But anyway, there's also some other fun stuff happening across the world. You heard this group, the Wolf Guard? Apparently, like, they took down a queen or something of Gamaril. It's a pretty crazy story. Oh, wow. I was just in Gamaril. This was all happening while I was there? Yeah, yeah, like apparently their queen was kind of a bitch, and then <laughs> the wolf guard was like, we've had enough of your shit, and then took her down, and decided to put the new rulers, you know, uh, King Kalumvas and Queen Athena, apparently, are the new Oh no, I, I've heard the same thing, she really is a bitch. She really yeah. is a bitch, yes, She's yes. A nasty, nasty bitch, apparently, so... Yes, you know. it's her son, though. I believe it's her son that uh, is king now. Crazy. Yeah. But the queen's hot. He looks amazing. The queen is hot too, you know, like yeah. all these royals and they're hot. I mean, Jed, you know what I'm talking about, royals and like hot royals and stuff. And then Jed's like, shut up, dad. Then, and then Nicholas like, oh no, you, you like, uh, he knows this guy, you, this guy mentioned Ronin. Apparently he was like doing stuff as well in Exoria. Like he's a part of this group called the Scale Breakers and... You know, they were framed for terrorism, but it turns out they're not terrorists. They killed the actual culprits, and and a, a, there are a bunch of dragon slayers now. It's it's wild, you know? Oh, like, shit. People are actually slaying dragons nowadays? Yeah, like, it's almost such a wild thing to, to imagine, you know? And, uh, my God, like, uh-huh. There's pancakes and dragons and wolves running around. Yeah. yeah. This makes me hungry. Let's, let's be hoping we don't run into them. They seem scary. I'd love for you to meet my brother, but... Are you are you scared of skeletons? Zombies? They... Mummies? I... I literally work with skeletons, so define what you mean by scare. Yeah, like, you do remember the island is full of skeleton work stuff? I mean, I was initially afraid. I did not want, but an assignment was an assignment. Uh, anyway, we are getting sidetracked. Uh, we must go into uh, the secret room. Uh, Eddie, uh, the ladies that were uh, working for your brother, um, his so-called uh, devils, the Ricky's devils, they... They found a lead on uh, the people that uh, are behind this Heaven Sphere drug trade. And uh, just to explain to the players, um, your characters were called to assist Overshadow in finding uh, more clues on where the Heaven Sphere drugs are being produced or made or stored. And your uh, the Corponi family and Wager are all interested in, in this case because the drug trade has been interfering with their business, so they're like, we need to take these druggies down. Yeah. Yeah, Ricky's so, all wound up about it. He's very grumpy a lot, and uh, I can't stand it no more. So uh, we, we got to get this thing uh, figured out. Yeah. Are we going, right. Nikolai, are we going to the, the secret room? Yeah, but... The secret room. Like, it's kind of kind of early, kind of early for that, don't you think? I mean, I didn't bring my my other outfit. Yo, I'm not talking about that secret room. Oh, I'm talking oh. about the other secret room where we torture people for information. Got it. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Now let's now let's go. Let's bow, and then he goes here. <laughs> 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 Uh, Jed will stay in the bar to ma- Oh wait, they have servants for that, he'll come too. <laughs> uh, so you guys are now in the secret room, and you see this hooded guy here um, being uh, tied to a chair and completely unconscious, and surrounded him are Ricky's devils, uh, the fire genasi woman with a, ma- with a skeleton mask, 
and her skeleton masks has like it has like this like like axe blade that's sticking out on her skeleton mask think of it like a shark fin yeah but like an axe so that's that's how it is and then another an asamar wom- woman who has like a a mask that has like the biblically accurate angel style na mask yeah. and a half orc woman who has like a japanese oni mask and got it the three of them so this is uh ricky's devils so let me give you guys a quick summary of uh at the at the notes hey girls and then they turn around and they're like hey eddie immunization great <laughs> yeah uh and they 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 uh they tell you uh they explain to you what happened and they're like so the three they they, they speak like one by one but they complete each other's, each other's sentences, sentences. So, cool yeah basically like so we're here to tell you that we captured this dude and apparently he's in the know of the heaven sphere drug and uh yeah we uh captured him and beat the shit out of him and put him here for you guys to interrogate and we also went to do some other investigation stuff as well and we found out that this guy his name is Kral Crabfeed he is uh a part of this crazy weird faction called Manticore and so yeah Thanks girls. And Big Eddie goes to the table, slams both his paws, boosh, so like the snacks are flying everywhere. Where yeah. are the drugs going? <laughs> you see you say that, but Corral is unconscious. <laughs> oh, that's it girls. I just wanted to do that. Uh take it away everybody. <laughs> just this one. Well, uh I think the first thing we need to do is make sure this guy wakes up. And then I kind of like patch him up so that he can wake up. Okay. Uh, you patch him up and he slowly uh, like gains unconscious. And then when he gains unconscious, he sees you guys. He looks around. He's so confused. And he starts crying. It's so pathetic. <laughs> uh, while he's crying, I just say to him, All right, buddy. If my friends want to know, then uh, we'll probably let you go. And see if anyone disagrees with that. Please don't kill me! I can promise you that I won't kill you. I can promise you about the rest. He cries some more. He's really pitiful. <laughs> really pitiful. Yeah. As I say to him, oh, these uh, three ladies over here who are beating you up, they said that you know something about the Heaven Sphere drug. <coughs> What's the Heaven Sphere drug? <laughs> I'd like inside check. Yeah, sure. Inside check, please. Okay. Why not? And then I'll guidance myself too. Okay. The inside. Uh, B. <laughs> oh no! I rolled really low, but that's eleven. Eleven. Hmm. You're not sure. Oh, that's the total, even with guidance. Yes, even with guidance. Wow. Okay, um, he seems like, you can't really tell if he's lying or telling the truth, that I can tell you. Alright, I'll just take his word for it. Well, I look at the three of them and say, Are you sure this man knows anything about the Heavens for your drug? And Ashy's like, of course, Homer, darling, we know he is. Like, we totally know for sure. We investigated his room. And he had like these letters, the secret code letters that said like uh, Manticore stuff, blah blah blah. And then she actually show uh, Lucy produces the letter and shows it to you guys. 
you look yeah, at the yeah. letter, yeah, and it confirms. It confirms uh, every, even it, with trying to figure uh, cipher deducting uh, skills as well. You confirm that this is a legit like thing. This kind of is like a very dead giveaway. Okay, I guess I'll follow up with questions. I say to Kral. All right, Kral. Maybe you don't know anything about the Heaven Sphere drug, but are you really part of Manticore? And then Kral just like sniffles. You can see like there's snot dropping out of his nose, and then you see him swallow it because he's gross. And <laughs> and then he says. Yes, I'm a part of Manticore. Why? Well, for some reason, you're part of Manticore, and you also... And also, the <laughs> Ricky's devil seem to think that you know something about the Heaven's Fear drug. And then Nikolai actually chimes in and he's like, Say, Homer, wasn't there like a nasty rumor about you being like a Manticore sympathizer? Where'd you hear a rumor like that from? From places, you know, people talk. Is that true? Well, I might have helped some of them back in my day. <gasps> Why? Hey, did I cut off? Hello? Did I cut off? Hey, uh, Nikolai gasped and said, why? Okay. I think I cut off at that moment. I said, okay. well, I help anybody who's uh, in need of help when I see an injured person. So, of course I help them out. All right. And then Nikolai ch uh, turns to Harlan and I'm like, uh, what about you, Harlan? Do you know anything about these um, the Manticore freaks? Do do I know anything about the Manticore freaks? <laughs> uh, let's see. I would like you to roll a history check, and for a very meta reason, do it with advantage. Um, let's see how much you roll. Uh, eighteen. Nice. Okay. Uh. From what you know, Harlan, you are aware that Manticore is this uh, group of like they kind of they're like a terrorist, not a terrorist group. They're more like a criminal group that strongly believes in like you know the strong being you know like the strong shall inherit the earth type of shit like that. And and they start a lot of chaotic stuff in in the belief of like you know uh, thank you Wayne yeah extremist extremist. <laughs> How do you pronounce <laughs> extremists? That's how you pronounce it. Uh, they they start all these uh, chaotic stuff for the sake of like creating situations where you know strong people are uh, produced and stuff. So that's what Harlan knows. Uh, Harlan kind of like uh, has this whole time he's rolled up a new cigar and he's puffing on it. Then he says. I suppose it's quite common information among our circles that uh, what Manticore believes in, and then he spits on the ground. Um, and then uh, he kind of takes a step forward towards uh, Kral, and then uh, he's going to uh, look at him, and then he says, you look like a decent guy, you know, you don't, you don't belong in a place like this. They you don't belong. belong. You yeah. don't belong. No, look at them. These people, these are bad people. Uh -huh. you know? And you're not a bad person. Yes, I'm a good person. You're a good person. You're just tied up in manticore things, am I right? Yeah, yes. I mean, what? how could someone like you be tied up with a manticore? It's it's mostly nepotism, but yeah, I, I'm not tied to Manticore. Um, and then Harlan's gonna cast and detect thoughts just to sort of like um reconfirm right. this. Uh yeah. Um are you gonna just just go for the surface thoughts or are you gonna try and probe deeper? 
Um, I'm just going to listen to surf, Surface Thoughts first. Okay. While he was... Uh... While while you were saying while you were you know trying to convince him and say all those stuff, uh, the surface thoughts that were crossing in his head was like, uh, I have to fool them. They mustn't find out. Oh shit! <laughs> that, that's the surface thoughts. Har Harlan will kind of look look like he's focusing, and he says, "Kral, I'm your friend." Do you really want to be left to the guy over there who looks like he could probably eat you as a snack? I'm your friend. Tell me. And then he's going to push deeper. Okay. Uh, I do need to make a save for that, right? Yeah, a wisdom save. A wisdom save. Okay. Let's see. I will roll a wisdom save. Ah. Wisdom save, thanks to roll. And what's your uh, DC? Uh, 17. Ooh, okay. Will I be... Oh, wow, I just rolled a 17. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You tried to probe deeper, and you can notice that even though this sad, pathetic guy is doesn't seem like a member of Manticore, he has some metal, you know? He's able to somehow resist uh, whatever metal probes you've been sending to him. Uh, Harlan will look at um, uh, Nikolai and Tej and everyone and who says, it appears our friend here would like might be more receptive to more uh, persuasive means. Playtime's over. <laughs> oh! And, uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Go on. In that case, uh, do you want some of my dry fish? <laughs> no, we're done with good cup. We're, got, we're done with good cup. We're good. bad cup. Oh, 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 okay. Bush! Where are the drugs going? <laughs> Fucking <laughs> Growl is like, I won't tell you, they'll kill me. <laughs> we'll kill you first. No, please don't kill me. So tell you tell us where the drugs are going. It's as simple as that, really. It's like Do you do you wanna die now or do you wanna die later? <laughs> I really wanna die in general, period. <laughs> Uh, how about this? Um, you tell us, and uh, Nikolai over here is gonna give you some sanctuary for some time. And then Nikolai's like, yeah, definitely, I will give you all the sanctuary you need. And he winks. And then, uh, hmm. Uh, <laughs> uh, Big Eddie, please roll, uh... A persuasion check, please. Persuasion. Do I have anything for this? Do I have anything for this? I don't think so. No, I just have a plus five. That's oh 21. <clears throat> okay. So, crowd. Uh, you know, for a minute there, Kral seemed like a very, um, you know, like a tough guy being able to resist the mental probe, but now he reverts back to being pathetic and easily fooled. So he's like, okay, okay, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, what, what you want. What do you want exactly? Like, well, I don't, I, I'm too scared to answer, give you a general question, answer to the question. What do you want to know? <coughs> uh, <coughs> Big Eddie asks about uh, the heavens. <coughs> What's it called again? Heavens. Heavens fear. Yeah, heavens fear. Drug. Okay. Uh, what, or like where the base of operations might be, or something. He tells you um, the heavens. He he tells you that the heavens fear drug is. Uh, 
the base of operations they know he he knows for sure that it is uh somewhere in Gamaril mm. and that uh he also tells you that heaven sphere is it's uh it's not just a drug it's some it's not just like a drug that affects people physically it also affects people mystically mm. but that's all he knows that's all he, he knows, knows that knows, yeah that's what he claims to be like what he knows so far and do an insight um sure sure insight. nope <laughs> five <laughs> Yeah, so uh, th that's all he knows, guys. Right. Uh, what What about your trend of fear and teach? Do you wanna ask him something or do something? Mm. Oh, I was just gonna waterboard him, but you know, I'm just waiting oh. if he was okay. resistant. <laughs> well, what about you, teach? The, uh, do you Do you wanna do something or ask no, him something? I don't know them. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, hmm. So yeah, that that's 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 mostly um what he knows so far, and uh, is there anything else you guys probably want to do, like maybe cast a spell or 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 anything? Uh huh. I don't have anything that can help out with this. I don't have access to what do you call that zone of truth or whatever. Okay. Uh let's see here. Um you also know by the way, um I posted it in uh, story notes before, but uh basically um because for the past ten months you also uh checked on other like uh did some bits of investigation as well on uh on this whole thing so you guys know that um thanks to dust bunny and rock knights like investigations you guys confirmed that the the liquid that is inside the heaven sphere drugs the the ones that are like in vials the liquid is not great the the liquid is not based on any material from from the material plane. It's not made from any substance in that is native to this plane. And uh, in case you forgot to link, when Homer casts any divination spell on it, it just like changes to random colors. And you also learn that a non-detection spell is kind of like placed on it somehow. And uh, other things you guys learn is that uh most of the victims who take this drug they're either like homeless addicts or just like mercenaries that you end up killing and uh it, you can guess that like they were all part of like a testing phase of sorts and uh the other thing as well for you eddie but specifically you also learned in a previous investigation that when dorian was still leader of the Corponi crime family. He distributed a few of those vials around places. So, yeah. <clears throat> um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, DM, but uh, mm -hmm. Eddie and Ricky, they're just concerned about this drug circulating around that specifically affects the Corponi family's business, right? Yes, and uh, but they also learned that like the family technically has handled some of these drugs as well. So they wanna also try to you know find out where it comes from and like maybe get rid of it as well. You know, just got it. And we we now we now know that it's in Gamaril. Are we going to Gamaril? Is that uh, Eddie's plan? Uh... <laughs> From from what uh, Crowell told you, he he just he, when he said somewhere in Gamrel, he literally means somewhere in Gamrel. He didn't actually give you a specific area to go to, and yeah. So you guys are kind of stumped for this, but there are other ways for you to find out uh, more with the information you learned. You can either go to uh, Rebecca Karen or you can 
Also, you can also try with Harlan's contacts as well for information. Sure, why not? Let's try. Let's try Harlan's contacts. During okay. the first ten month downtime while he was exploring Gamera, would he have learned anything about the Heaven Sphere drug during that frame? Uh, what you learned is uh what I just mentioned as well. Uh, and placed in the story notes. Yeah. You, you guys also learned, by the way, that the Heaven Sphere drug, it has magical properties that is consistent with conjuration and divination spells. So, yeah. Just, uh, just a clue or a fun fact. But, uh, yeah, you guys will be uh, going to Harlan's contacts, and I will be changing the map now. Julio, Julio. Uh, Har Harlan's contacts are somewhere in the island, somewhere in the city. So you guys go to a place, uh, you guys basically go to like a, a park. And uh, in that park, there is a fountain. And you see in the fountain, there are like three kids hanging out. And one of those kids is swimming in the fountain. And uh, I'm not sure, has the map loaded for you guys? Almost, uh, yeah. Uh, for me. Not yet for me. Okay. It's so pretty. Yeah. Ooh, I'm excited. Hang on. Gonna oh, it's so pretty. Your, I'll place your tokens. Uh, oh my god, those are those are cute NPCs. <laughs> yeah. Our contacts children. <laughs> Our the contacts. other kids. What? Oh, that's cute. They are. They're street kids. <laughs> Not a man. These street kids have probably seen some things. Yeah, uh, you know, as you approach these kids, um, Tej in particular, you you feel like you're looking at your own mm. reflection through these poor children. Uh, yeah. I just laugh at them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> They just like sucks to be you, kids. <laughs> imagine, Next. imagine having to go through that, bro. It's kind of hilarious. Uh -huh. <laughs> L, L plus ratio. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, anyway, uh, you guys, uh, yeah, um, the kids immediately recognize uh Harlan, but they're a little bit like. Um, hesitant when they see uh, the f other th four of you, they they recognize you guys in particular, kanang Homer, Teach, and Thera, because um, Overshadow is well known in the city, and they're scared. They're rightfully scared of you guys. So, yeah. Uh, Harlan will walk up to the kids, and he'll say, "They're all right, Wendy, Henry, Pe Penny." How many times do I have to tell you that the fountain is only for if you need spare change? You do not bathe in it. And then Penny's like, oh, but it's fun, Harlan, sir. Like, especially when I put the coins on my head and like splash around. It hurts my head sometimes, but I like it. And then Wendy's like, you will die of a concussion, you stupid idiot. <laughs> Wendy, I put you in charge for a reason. I know. I will. I will do better, Harlan, sir. Um, Harlan will kind of like pat Wendy's head, and mm -hmm. will kind of like say, "Do you have any word?" Uh, yes, we we do. Uh, we do, sir. We actually uh, found out that uh, from what you wanted to know. Um, Manticore is actually wait. Uh, they actually ask you what you wanted to know, and then you tell them it's Manticore, and then they have information about it. So they tell you that, uh, well, from what we know, um, there are various factions active in in around Tyran, uh, various Manticore factions. Uh, according to uh, uh, one of our businesses in Exoria, a few of them were found in exoria they're trying to capture some poor girl and uh but uh there there's also one in gamaril 
somewhere in the valley uh, near the east of Gamerol. And then uh, Henry comes and tells you, yes, yes, so Harla Sir Harlan, the, the coordinates of their last location is 00551235678. He gives you like exact coordinates, which you understand where it is. Okay. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, then, mm -hmm. Harlan will nod as if like he recognizes the coordinates and he says very well uh, now you may please tell Aunt May and he kind of like pauses as if like to say that it's like a code name that the mm -hmm. sun is shining but the ice is slippery and then winks at them like it's code and then they give you, the three of them give you a thumbs up. And then uh, Penny also says, oh, before we forget, Sir Harlan, there's also this thing. Apparently, the Manticore group are working with this party. They're called the Darak. And Darak? Yeah, like D-A-R-A-C-H. And uh, we don't know much about them. They seem to be like a new criminal group or something. We don't have much intel, unfortunately, apart from they're involved. Uh, does Harlan know about the Dirac? Hmm. Uh, I want you to roll either a history or investigation check. And the rest of you can as well, if you want. Uh, it's a investigation. Nah, it's a hot nat one, so it's not <laughs> happening. <laughs> it's okay. It's a 27 for me. What? History or what? Investigation. Has anyone heard of the Drak? It's a harpy organization. History or gone, right? Invest history, history or investigation. investigation. Yeah, 27. History. Ridiculous. Okay. Crazy. But uh, based on that trend of fear, you, you have heard of like whispers around, uh, around certain like clubs and certain bounty hunter like places. Places where bounty hunters hang out because you you've been to these places now like in the past ten months because you're a bounty hunting group now and you've heard that um yeah there's this group <laughs> called the Darak they they seem to be like a a hmm, a group mostly you know that some of their members are spellcasters but that's all you know uh, but you also uh, realize that. Probably Rebecca Caron has more intel on these guys. Mm, so I've heard of these people, but all I know is they're spellcasters, but maybe Rebecca could do something. Probably knows more. Yeah. And then and then the three kids they, they tug on Harlan and they're like, Can we have our money please, sir? How did I teach you? You don't just ask for it, you take it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Henry just awkwardly like walks up to you, puts his hand in your pocket <laughs> to take the money. <laughs> Are you teaching then, them? Are you teaching them how to steal? And then <laughs> when he also like walks up behind. <laughs> Har Harlan Shrug says, "I didn't teach that one. He's shit at it." <laughs> well. Oh my god, am I gonna, am I gonna, okay, I'm gonna show off for now. Wow. I'm just gonna, I don't know, I yes. guess I'll, I'll, sl Please. I'll discreetly take. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All three uh, of them. Betal, betal, like, um, Fira, my, let's, let's see how high you roll. Please roll something, even though you have a plus 20 to sleight of hand. 32. <laughs> Ridiculous. Okay. What the fuck, man? So... So when Fira said, oh, I'm, I'm just going to show off a bit, uh, you, uh, Harlan tries to see, like, what you're going to do. But, like, all of a sudden, like, Fira pulls, like, things out of his pockets. Uh, took, uh, out of his pockets, he saw, like, the necklace that Wendy was wearing. One was, like... And then he out of his pockets he also pulled out Henry's shoes and uh, Penny's uh, 
and a lock of hair from Penny. And also, Harlan, your cigar is in his hands as well. I could teach All you how to do them. this. And then... But, you know, you know, Harlan is right. You don't ask for it. You take... And he just gives it back. And they, they take their things back. And then they were so impressed. And then they were like... Oh wow! They they were actually impressed, but also like, also a bit uh, shocked that like you know even Henry was genuinely confused. Like how did how was his shoes taken from him? Like he was wearing it one minute. So. How do you steal someone's shoe when it's on them? That's also that's very impressive. Yeah, I mean logically it makes no sense, but this is a funny scene. So yeah. Uh, so yeah, um, and uh, we will uh, we will head over to the next scene. Um, you guys eventually, uh, <coughs> the kids are eventually given their payment for this hotel, and uh, the next place you go to is Be before we leave here. Big Eddie like yeah. uh, throws a coin into the fountain, but then yeah. uh, he. He pretends to not notice that he spilled some coins onto the ground by by uh, him. He spills like 15 gold total. Okay. Okay, got it. Yeah, he's he's acting like he's being clumsy and whatever. Well, he doesn't notice that he spilled anything before they leave. Okay, okay. Uh like a lot of you guys can notice but obviously like Penny like knelt and like snatched some of the coins and just pretended like no one noticed yeah and yeah anyone else want to do something or say something before we change the scene nope i'm good over here all right so you guys are heading to a new area now um this place is uh in the middle of the business district of skullduggery city uh you take again like a cab all the way to the business district uh the cab is of course driven by a skeleton and the carriage is pulled by a skeletal horse and uh you know there's a skeleton conductor just collecting the fares and stuff and uh you guys eventually arrive to the middle of the business district and in that uh in the middle you notice uh, this large building it's like a tower that uh um, with steampunk designs and there is like uh like minor illusion magic that's displaying the uh the company it's called hive industries and uh for for you players um rebecca karen she originally 10 months ago she was just like uh, an information broker who just owned like a bar a high class bar but ever since then she girl bossed her way to success and now she has a huge company now and but she's still a criminal information broker so there's that you know and you guys are kind of on good terms with her so she lets uh so you guys are able to visit and uh have appointment with appointments with her uh there are several um skeletons and some uh living people that work in the building and they they guide you to to the top floor of the tower and when you reach the top floor you guys are approached by the zombified corpse of robert Ro robin hoodlum who if you guys forgot was like killed by rebecca during the before you guys like assassinated six so uh robin hoodlum this zombie he still he still has his hair his red hair and his green clothes but you see him wrapped in like bandages and they're enchanted to like cover up the disgusting smell that he would give up as a zombie and he just like you you just follow him he's under rebecca's control so like he you just he just guides you to her office and this is her office. I am changing now the map. And 
also buns. This is not Hive Industries. It's Hive. H I V E. So I was gonna say. I was like, yo. <laughs> I'm not doing a K-pop shout out. No. <laughs> I was like, yo. My eyes were like open. Uh, so here you guys are, uh, and this is so. This is her office. This is uh, uh, it's very. It's almost very moderny, but you know, like uh, it's still it's still within the 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 era, you know, the appropriate era, and but it's it is indeed very polished, very uh, clean, uh, and and it smells very um, it smells like a hospital, and here you see uh, Rebecca Karen uh, there in. Uh, uh, sitting in her CEO desk and, you know, looking amazing. She has, like, uh, her red hair just tied <clears throat> tied into a ponytail, and she has a lot of golden jewelry. And, yeah, she she welcomes you guys. Says, hello there, uh, Overshadow. And... Uh, hello there, Mr. Harlan and Mr. Big Eddie. I'm surprised to see you here. Uh, tell me, what, what do I owe the pleasure? Um, <clears throat> we're here for information. Oh. Uh, what, what was that? What's the name of the group? The Rock? Yeah. The Rock. What do you know? Yeah, what, even, what do you know about The Rock? Oh, is it um, is it like the spelling D A R A C H or is it D H E space R O C K? D A R A C H. Definitely the oh. latter. <laughs> okay. All right. Very good to know. Um, from what I know personally, the rock is. Hmm. I would say it is the druid version of Overshadow. If Overshadow is, well, if more than half of Overshadow is filled with rogues, then I would say Darak is mostly an adventuring party full of druids of all flavors. Mm. And they're evil. Mm -hmm. Well, we're all evil, but they're like, you know, naughty behavior and all that. Oh. Well, that's not good. That's not good. Yes, and uh, with their combined druid skills, they are practically a small private army, considering they can summon beasts, elementals, and other things. To, like, they're like an army, basically. Yeah. That's what you get when seven druids put a lot of focus into summoning magics. Do you know where the Dirac are based? Hmm. Well, it's very sensitive information, but since I got here to the top because of your actions, I will let you in on this little secret. Yes, I know where they are. They are in Gamaril. And then she tells you the exact location, which confirms what the kids told you and Harland. And she also tells you they are in a, in a valley in that area. And mm. from what I know is, uh, well, they seem to be storing a lot of interesting things in that valley. They have a base, like in a mountain somewhere. But be warned, their surveillance is very exquisite. As you know, Homer... You can do a, a lot with a bunch of birds, a flock of birds flying around, or reconnaissance for druids. Indeed. Well, I'll be letting nature guide us. It will be nature versus nature, I guess. I suppose so, but I know nature will favor the strongest. Yes, yes they shall. Isn't that right, Robin? And then Robin just nods. Oh. You look better dead, Robin. 
then <laughs> Robin gives a thumbs up. <laughs> and then Rebecca's like, I love keeping this man around. I feel so nice learning Finger of Death as a spell. And then he says, Robin, do a handstand. And then Robin does a handstand. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> well. <laughs> anyway, is there anything else you want to know? <laughs> well, he's still upside down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Robin was going to like stand back again, but Rebecca's like, I didn't say stop. <laughs> yeah, Becky. I got I got a question. Uh, what is it? So uh who's your interior designer? It's a pretty pretty nice spot you got here and I think Ricky would like this. Oh yes, I'm sure the godfather of the Corponi family would, you know, have such exquisite taste. Um I designed this whole office myself. I am a woman of wealth and exquisite taste as well oh wow uh perhaps uh ricky's gonna give you a call huh when, when we have like uh new branches and of offices and stuff uh maybe you can help us out oh perhaps i can help you with the branch you have over here when i have the time i'm a busy woman yeah that'd be great uh thanks uh, thanks a lot of course. And then, and then... Is there anything else? Guess we're off to prepare against this, then. Yeah. I think you've given us enough. You go back to what you're focusing on, Rebecca. You are a busy woman, <laughs> after all. Yeah, or making Robin flip. DM, do we have a yeah. means of transportation to get to Gamaril? I do. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Transport. I cool. have plans. Like, well then, best of luck to you. And please, if you learn anything interesting, be sure to keep it for yourselves and trade it with me exclusively. Will do. All right. And then, yeah. Um, <laughs> are you guys gonna head to Gamaril right now, or do you still want to prepare some other stuff? Well, we I think stuff, now's right? the chance for us to buy magic items and other stuff, because yeah. we might not get another chance. Yeah. Okay. Big Eddie's gonna buy snacks. Okay. There you go. Uh, the Blasphemy Blade, where is it? The, the what? Blasphemy blade. Oh, the blasphemy blade? It's it's there inside the bag of holding. Right. Yeah, you can get it. Yeah, I'll borrow it. And uh, that's that's so awkward pulling out a big sword from a bag. Yeah. Like, mmm, let me pull it, yeah. let me pull it, let me pull it. And then... Just tell Fira jokingly, <laughs> you think that's the weirdest thing we've ever done? I mean, no. And yeah, then he just starts attuning Boy. with the blade. Nice. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, you guys, what, what sort of magic items do you uh, plan on getting before leaving? Also, like Harlan, yeah, you. I forgot to, I don't know, um, did you decide on what uncommon magic item? And yeah, item? I got a... Um, I got glamoured studded leather and like an instrument of the bard, like the uncommon one. Nice. Okay. Yeah. You you already had your um your uh the the bard's instrument. Uh the glamour studded studded leather you also were able to acquire it beforehand. So, yeah. And uh, uh Homer, what what items were you planning to get exactly? Oh no, I wasn't planning to get anything. I was just mentioning that this might be the last chance we can do that before heading to Gamer. Ah, oh, okay, okay. See here. I think okay. I'll just save my money, because later on I'm going to need to buy some really expensive stuff. Okay. Uh, Alright. And, uh... 
in that case, we will uh, head to Gamaril. Off we go. And so there. I'm so my transport via plant spell so that we can do that. Yeah, you are able to use your transport via plant spell. You know of a tree in Gamerl that can take you close to the to the location that Rebecca and the kids uh, told told you guys. And using you three as a, as a doorway, you you casted a spell on him, and like on his other side, another door opens, and you are able to pop out on the other side of a tree. And you guys are now in a foresty area in Gamerl full of mists and full of giant trees and uh yeah you guys are pretty far from civilization so you won't be running into certain other adventuring groups here beautiful. for sure and uh yeah it is a beautiful place and here is yeah you were here two months ago this place is wonderful and uh Teach you actually notice suddenly that there is a dragon tree fruit nearby. So, <laughs> yeah. The, the tree mm. is ripe, so it's, it's good for picking. And uh, the, the place that um, you guys are supposed to be in, it is going to be... Uh, It'll take like mga maybe half a day's journey to actually arrive in in the actual place. But uh, you can reach there on foot, or you can also like ride. I mean, there's no there's no place to like rent horses. So unfortunately, yeah, uh, on foot it will take like half a day. But maybe like through animals, maybe you can have like, cut it to like three hours or something yeah but the problem with that is if we had in guns blazing now i'll be lacking one six level spell slot so i actually yeah. recommend that we long rest for the night. yeah and with that amount of time i would like to give it you guys some time to role play all right so like homer has been here a while back uh mm -hmm. And because he's Homer, he probably did some work here, so he would probably be checking on the things that he worked on. So he probably like created a small grove where he and his party could kind of like just chill out for a bit. Uh -huh. So yeah, it's uh, how he formed it was with using mold earth a lot of times, like over the month. And um, yeah, he was able to kind of make it look structured in a sense. And then it's also like, it's very natural. Everything's very natural. Think like the elven homes that you can see, like if you search for elven homes near trees and stuff. Uh -huh. so, yeah, that's very much the vibe right now. And I tell everyone... Well, this was a grove that I made some time ago in case uh, we needed to be around here for some reason. Uh, make yourselves at home, everybody. I'll prepare some water, and then he takes the decanter of endless water and puts it in some kind of like reservoir space so that we can have some water ready. All right. And uh, before I forget, I almost forgot. But you were also able to uh, grab someone helpful for this mission. You asked, um, since your ally said with the Skullduggery Corpse Corps, you got to ask them if you could borrow Rotaren because his ability to know convenient things might be helpful. So he's with you guys. Okay. His ability nice to, to know Rotaren. convenient yeah. things. I'm like, hey guys, yeah, I'm. Aren't you guys lucky that like, I my schedule's free. <laughs> anyway, this is a nice place you got here, Homer. 
Oh yeah, I got to make it over the time that I was spending over here. I needed a place to rest once I was done traveling for the day after all. Ah, I see. Um, what, what about the rest of you guys? What, what, do you have anything to like roleplay or mention? Or hey, uh, hey, uh, homie. You got any, uh, it's a nice place and all, but, uh, you got any, uh, snacks? Well, the snacks are all over the place. Uh, you can search for berries over there, a couple of miles away. And then, uh, before I left this place, there was a pack of deer that was up in the north side. Maybe one, two miles away. It'll be a while before you get them and come back, though. Ah! Hmm. I'm I'm not much of a a berry kind of guy, you know. I uh. I guess it's deer then. <laughs> yeah, I only eat I only eat the you know healthy stuff like like dried fish and chips and meat. Well, I think you should be fine with deer meat, and uh, speaking of fish, there might be some natural fish in the lake that's from the east. That must have been at least an hour's walk away. They... they sell fish by the river? Oh no, you, there's no shops here, Big Eddie. It's all just land. You're gonna have to catch them yourself. I have to catch the fish? Uh, have you never tried camping before? Uh, yeah, but like, uh... Ricky's always got, like, servants and whatever to, to do all those things for us. I'll be damned. It's time for you to learn today, boy. Come with me. And, like, uh... I let Big Eddie... Um, you know, learn how to hunt for himself. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, wow. that's cool. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, what about you, Fira, and uh, Teach? Well, how do you react to, like, being in nature, outside of civilization? Fira sneezes because he's allergic to pollen. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that's my IRL allergy, and I hate it. He's just gonna wow. keep sneezing, he's like rumbling, like, why am I here? <laughs> Teej, it's up here uh, Teej oh, consumes every, every dragon fruit on the dragon fruit tree. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. Uh, I'm what about at least you? one of you <laughs> has a lot of energy. <laughs> oh. Can we get the assignment done and we're out of here, please? <laughs> Here, you gotta go out in the wild more. No wonder why you're getting allergic to all these plants. You don't I get exposed not. to them enough. I did not have a choice. You cannot chastise me when I wasn't given what choice. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, oh. <laughs> City folk. I guess that's what happens when the city folk go out in the wild. <laughs> yeah. And then Rotaran raises his hand and it's like, I've actually got a question. Um, what exactly is our plan here? Um, you did mention that these dru the, the rock has like a bunch of summons walking around and probably some animals spying and stuff. Got any? Got any strategy well i do have this nifty stuff that lets me cast the, the pass without trace spell at will that'll at least help us get past all of the, the patrols done with that mm -hmm. the only plan i've got is we gotta strike them fast before they can summon anything nice fascinating job okay and uh uh so and then Rotaran looks at Harlan and uh asks Harlan um Mr. Harlan uh what what are you able to do exactly 
Uh, are you one of those musicians, spellcasters? Bards, I mean. Just so. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, what, ha what do we do if we get caught? Do we... Well, if we get caught, I do have my spell ready for us to have a quick escape. Okay. Alright. Huh. Well, we should, uh... We should rest then, before, so we can all be able to... be 100% in this. Indeed. And, uh, I have a question for the rest. Really? If there's a way that you can paralyze them or otherwise make them unable to move, I would say that's ideal. Because if they're as strong as I am, then they can also do a quick escape whenever they like. So just keep that in mind. I'll be preparing that tomorrow as well. I'll concentrate on- Ah! ah. <laughs> oh my disciple, and then I'll concentrate on this sword, and he just like sticks it on the ground, and then because he's been training for the past, he's gonna do magic magic with his fingers, and it's like red and black mist covers the sword, and he's just gonna keep sit there sneezing occasionally, yes. and then attuning to the blade for tomorrow. Nice. You're you're able to attune to a great sword, die. Because I'm a blade lock with the pack of the blade and improved mm -hmm. pack weapon. Nice. <laughs> okay. Very nice. Okay. Oh, on my leg. I have a cramp. Okay. Anyway, uh, we will be skipping over to the next day. You guys have taken a long rest and are fully charged up. Uh, you guys are able to cover ground and reach the place you you're you're not like in the exact place you're in a place where based on a uh, quick surveillance from feather as well you're able to guess that okay they don't have eyes in this space so we can hang here and get ready you know for the for the inv for the infiltration so um how I will describe this place is, uh, it's kind of like, uh, hmm, how do I describe this place? It's an interesting question. The place looks like, let me look if I actually have the image of the place outside because I'm pretty sure I did. Oh, it's here. Thank God. Okay. Um, the outside place kind of looks like this. Um, yes, those are animal bones scattered around the place. And uh, this is the one place where you are, you are confident that uh, the rat does not have any eyes and ears. Uh, based on a uh, quick surveillance by Feather, uh, Homer, when you use your, when you try to look through uh, Feather's eyes, you notice that the place, uh, there are not just, uh, <laughs> they're not just, like, they're not using, like, just animals and even plants to, like, survey the place. Huh? They're also using, like, manticore, uh, uh, manticore henchmen walking around and patrolling the area. So... Rotaran tells you guys, do any of you have magic where you can knock one guy out and like, I don't know, impersonate him? Or is that a good plan? I don't know if impersonating anyone's a good idea right now. We're trying to be as covert as possible. Hmm. Is there any way that we can fight that? all of these dudes entirely or they're creating like a wall they're they're not creating a wall they don't seem to have enough man or they they didn't they didn't seem to bother enough to putting manpower to like uh uh create a wall 
they're basically just patrolling all around the area. And Rotaran himself tells you guys that, yeah, like there seems to be a pattern to how the Manticore peeps are walking. So there might be a chance where we can go in while they're not looking at a specific area. So there. Blind spot. Yeah, blind spot. I think that's our best bet. Okay. Uh, you guys wait for a while actually to see when the blind spot pops up. Uh, Rotaran tells you guys that when we start moving, the blind spot will open up to us as we approach. So we have to be as stealthy as possible. I'm way ahead of you as he casts uh, Pass Without Trace on everyone. Nice. I'll also okay. dismiss, um, uh, what do you call this? I'll dismiss <coughs> Feather for a bit so that I don't have to roll stealth for him. Okay. <laughs> Pass without trace. And yeah, let's all collectively roll stealth checks. This plus ten, Ready, right? Boys oh. and girls. Yeah. Yeah. Plus ten. Boom! Not twenty plus thirteen plus ten is forty-three. Let's go. <sighs> How much is this? Twenty-six, thirty-six. Forty-three, son of a bitch. Okay, I rolled oh, a in, and with my modifier, I'm good as well. <coughs> Jesus Christ, you all are high. 43 is the highest number we've rolled, guys. T rolled a 43 <laughs> also. No! i sorry, sorry, a 33. Oh. A 33. <laughs> I got a 36. <laughs> Our lowest is going to be. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> The... Yeah, see Sean, see what they roll, see what I have to deal with in terms of rolling. <laughs> uh, all Big Eddie has to do is like stop eating for a bit and he's invisible. <laughs> he's just like freaking Drax, dude. You know, you guys, you guys don't even bother. You guys are like a bunch of like drunk girls walking into a club and they still don't notice you, you know? <laughs> That's how high you rolled. One of you did a cartwheel and still, yeah. you know. Yeah. Excellent. <sighs> so. Skill monkeys. So Am skill I monkeys. I didn't even prepare an encounter in case you get caught because I'm like, I know they will escape. Like, they all have to collectively roll natural ones or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Just yelling, yeah. He's like, I'm making the sound of the wind. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Someone's and making the sound of the grass. Just say, that must have been the wind. <laughs> it must have been the wind, yeah. So like, Rotaran was just, you know, he actually stepped on, like, 20 wigs and, like, farted. And they're like, oh, that's that's a weird noise. What is that? <laughs> My goodness. So, uh, <coughs> yeah, um... What did Harlan roll? <laughs> what did you roll, by the way, Harlan? I've seen I've seen Sean's character see sixteen. He, he also has good and he rolled a sixteen. A three on oh, so sixteen. Uh, three Very plus nice. thirteen. He's six. That still works. <laughs> Ridiculous. Oh my goodness! No one rolled below a twenty. Oh my goodness. Oh. Jesus. Yeah. You guys are, you guys, I'm sure you guys can, I know, like, because we don't even do, like, <laughs> crit fails here, SWAT rolling around. And, uh, yeah, you guys are like a SWAT team, actually, you're just, you know, yeah. And, uh, you guys were able to, um, sneak through the barrier of, I uh, know, uh, of, like, <laughs> a barrier of the Manticore guards, um, but you guys now notice that, um, uh, yeah, there are some plants and animals walking around the place now, and this time I don't want you guys to do a stealth check because nature is everywhere. I want you guys now to do maybe a survival check, please. I am not strong with. Let me, let me yeah, guys. Me. Twenty-one. You think? 
The only way I can keep this is if I had druids use nature against you. <laughs> oh my goodness. One, oh, three plus one. Guys, <laughs> what is happening? Why did the druid fail a survival check? Wait. Yeah. <laughs> Happens. Oh no. City boy, Sierra. Well, okay. <laughs> even if that's the case, I guess I may as well use one charge of the staff for animal friendship. <laughs> oh, nice! Yeah. Okay. And, I mean, uh, that's just in case we need to use it, so... <laughs> okay, okay. You do see... You do see a few... I'll say you saw, like... A bird. So you might want to cast Animal Friendship on it, to. Uh, yeah. Okay. I will cast Animal Friendship on the bird, using one charge of... The bird, right. yeah, it, you casted it on the bird, and the bird flies towards you, Homer, and 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 was like, it's just curiously looking at you, like, what did you just do? <laughs> then I just say to it, shh. So. And then it seems to understand what you said and carries on flying. And yeah, um, um, you guys are able to. Uh, it took you a while actually because of your low survival. Um, hmm. Uh, I have a question, uh, Homer. Do you have the spell like um? What was that? Uh, mud to stone or something? You, you know that spell, right? Uh, yeah, I know that spell, but I didn't prepare that today. I see. I okay. see what's happening here. Uh, there, there. You've you've been to the entrance of the cave, and it's a huge um cave. It's like a entrance to a mine. So the entrance is like a cave mouth, and there is some guards there. Uh, but you also you're able to like hide somewhere where they can't see you. But there's like that seems to be the only entrance. But. Do you want to try and look for other secret entrances, maybe? Or do you want to just use the front door? Hold on. Um, I'm trying to look for mud to stone, but then I can't seem to find it. Okay. Let me just type it out here. Is it mud it's to not, stone? It's not called mud to stone. I think, I think it's a specific S name. Stone shape? Uh, stone something? Like, because like, I know the spell lets you turn rock into mud. Yeah, I kind of recall this one too. I just forgot the name now. It's called. Let me look. Water. So cute. Dili, Open up. Druids. Druids. Damn, what? I know what spell you're talking about. I just forgot the name. Water. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Water make rock wet. What? What? Water make. What? 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 <laughs> water make rock wet. Spell. Nice, 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 nice. Very nice. Uh, oh my gosh, where is it? I know. I'm having a hard time finding it too. Yeah. Water make. It's okay. I know what spell you're talking about. It's just very obscure. I've never seen anyone cast it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, hold on. I think... Transmute rock. That's there cool. we go. That's, that's, that's what I said. Yeah. That's not what you said. You said it in spirits. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, I can... I didn't prepare that today. And um, uh, it's not even a druid spell. It's an artificer, bard, and wizard spell. Okay. Silly me. Okay, I thought it was through it, but yeah. Uh, does any one of you have a spell that could probably help with subtly breaking in? Like uh, the what about you, Harlan? Maybe you can like, maybe you can mind control them or something, or nope. Or I'm not. A, I'm not a very utility person. Spell, no. It's not a very utility term, unless you want mirror image, but sure, maybe not. <laughs> Pretty sure that won't do it. Well, yeah. 
if we don't get to get in place somehow, then we're in a bit of trouble. Anyone can make us invisible. Yeah, anyone? Does any oh, how about we distract them? Hmm. It'd be ideal if they don't even know that we're around. Yeah. Eddie's gonna throw a dried fish on the other side of where where <laughs> the party is. Okay. Oh, well, he's already done it, man. I guess I'm oh. gonna concentrate on Pass Without Trace now. Wait, did you throw that to like get the guard's attention? What, what was that for? Yes. So they go oh. investigate a different place and leave the entrance. Oh. Okay, um, I want you guys to roll... I want you, Eddie, to roll maybe a... Uh... Your choice, deception or performance? Aha! Performance it is. And I will just roll a collective perception check. Boom, 25. Wow! <laughs> I rolled a seven! So, you throw this, the fish in such a way that it hits a tree, which hits a branch, and the branch keeps swinging around and hitting other stuff, disturbing the birds. And then the guards, you can hear the guards being like, What is that? Let's go check it out! <laughs> oh yeah! And then Rotaran conf uh, tells you guys, yeah, they seem pretty distracted. Let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> yeah, problem solved. <laughs> go. go, let's go. You guys are able to enter the cave mouth, and Rotaran actually warns you guys ahead, like, uh, watch out, there are, like, people that are passing by. Like, he seems to know the exact moment when people would pass by, and he tells you hide, mm -hmm. and you're able to hide perfectly fine. And then... Uh, you guys were able to, um, this, so this is basically like a mining facility. So here is what the inside kind of looks like. looks like this. There's like a, tr there's like a tracks there and, um, you know, you guys are stealthing your way, hiding and not getting detected. And finally, stealthing uh, away, but... <laughs> finally, you guys are, uh, going to uh hmm eventually you guys were able to um thanks to retirement guidance you're able to find like a room that seems suspicion enough and so i will change it to that map okay so uh, uh transmit Rock became a druid spell, I think, during Tasha's maybe. Ah, uh, that's why. That's why I got you. <laughs> yeah, that's my bad. So, you guys are able to find this specific spot. I'm gonna put you guys here. And... Uh, yeah, so... You guys can... Explore a bit over here wait let me put homer here ah, there he is and harlan so yeah you guys are in this area and uh looking around you guys find like this is kind of this place is kind of repurposed into an office so uh in this office you guys are uh looking around and it seems like there is some important stuff here uh fira you notice there are some journals lying around in in the uh in this area specifically where the barrels are the barrels are kind of like repurposed as tables of sorts you also see a lot of like star charts actually which is weird like what the stars have to do with this whole thing and you guys also, um, uh, you guys also notice like a diagram, and uh, Fira, please, I would like you to um, 
uh, try to oh you try to actually like figure out what this uh diagram says but to your own shock Fira, you cannot seem to understand the words being written in this diagram oh mm. what is this does anyone know how to read this yeah uh homer you look at the diagram and you realize it's written in Druidic. Okay, so I'll read it. Okay. I shall... Um, can, uh, I would like you to do an Arcana check. Alrighty, Arcana. Uh, since we don't need the stealth anymore, I'll guidance them. See Arcana. 16, okay. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad. Let's see. Um, I want to know how long do you want to take to like, do you want to scan the page? Do you want to read as much as you can? Uh, I'll probably what spend just like a minute reading it. If it's too long, then I'll read the rest later. Okay. Uh... From what you can understand uh, from scanning it, I will. You scan a few, uh, a paragraph. And in this paragraph, I will send it here in the chat. But yeah, I would like Homer to. I mean, Homer, you, you can also opt to like share or not share this, but this is what you scanned. Seven Sphere Hive Mind. Sphere drug can magically as a person builds of those who the drug biff after the high users often fall into a coma due to bombing stress being placed on the nervous system and their own bodies experiencing the dreams and the torment to take the I would probably share that with the party. Alright. And uh how do you how do the rest of you react to this information from what homer says heaven's fear seems to create like some sort of magical hive mind for people who take use of this drug <coughs> pretty. Hmm. they become like oh uh, one big brain uh, uh exactly the flag how oh, when trees interconnect the roots. And, uh, let's see here. Yeah, so, so there's that. And then you also, um, Fira, this actually, um, is a bit concerning to you because, uh, in the past 10 months, there were like, two or three students who had the misfortune of taking the heaven sphere drug and are in fall into a coma as well. So with this information, that means that whoever takes this, uh, this drug, they might have access to like the powers of like necromancers basically. So yeah, it's a big yikes. Ooh, you think about it as a cheating tool. They should have studied. <laughs> uh, and uh, no while you were the, the students, no names of the students in specific. You want me to give names? Okay, I'll give you names. Uh, their names are. Let's see. Uh, I mean, yeah, they they do have names. Uh. Wait, uh... Okay, uh, here are the <laughs> names of the unfortunate students that um, took those um, <coughs> the Heaven Sphere. Mm, either, either they're going to die or they'll fail my class and they'll have to take it. Well, that remains to be seen. He's gonna take none of the names. Wow. Very, uh... 
four priorities. <laughs> Naman. Of course. Akad first. Akad yeah. first, we. <laughs> Studies first, guys. Don't do drugs. <laughs> Don't, especially to cheat your way through a big exam, ha? Huh? Kalain. Very, very naughty. Okay. Uh, so, there's also... um. You also uh, notice, guys, uh, there is... Uh, there seems to be like a, a loud noise that uh, you've been slowly hearing around the cave. And it looks like a, a large creature just sleeping. And uh, if you guys could uh, look around in this area, you guys can uh, discover something even more alarming is that you see a huge dragon mm -hmm. and it's not awake it's kind of asleep but you see various tubes connected to the dragon and those tubes are filled with colors that do not belong to this plane and all that fluid is going inside the dragon oh my goodness that's not bad. I... that is not good um there we should remove those things. Those yeah, are... we that's, should. That's not, that's but the, I think we'll have to deal with that after we deal with those druids. That's I right. don't think this is a priority right now. And then uh, Rotaran on the uh, meanwhile, he uh, tells you guys to uh, to hide for a bit because someone is coming in the room and is going to like be around in the room so if you guys could roll some stuff checks okay that'd be great okay Alrighty. no pass without trace i can cast it one more time it's at will man oh oh uh -huh. yes please so... was that already at advent <clears throat> oh my god it did not 31 oh <sighs> Okay. 26. Oh, wait. After all, I did 21 more time. This is 37. 13. <laughs> That's twice now that my disadvantage roll is just one less than my first. So that's Good. 25. Okay. All right. Uh, so you're able to successfully hide from people uh, nearby. Uh, those aren't uh those are like a bunch of mantic or henchmen and you guys realize that uh this area is uh it's a stone door and uh they they just like collectively pushed it down to like open that area so there's that so you have two routes before you either the stone door or the staircase over here what do you take? Ding, 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 ding. Probably One try to check, check the stairs. Check the what? The what? The stairs. Okay. Okay. Let me reveal what it is. It is. It is... Boom. Da -da -da -da. Oh, it's what just water. It? Oh, it's. Yeah. Wait. Is that really just water, though? Well, we can take a look at it. Is it just water? The it's, Hulk, uh... The hoax pee. It's It's a... <laughs> it, it's a small... You. It's a, it's a... It's a small stream of water. It's like a... It's a tiny river lake thingy. It's an underground river. Lake. Underground river. I want to, like, take a look at the floor. Did they... Seem like they came from the river. Like, are there any wet track marks that were left from those dudes who came from the stairs? Oh, you want to know if they they moved here? Yeah, like, as when you were describing the scene of them opening the door, I wasn't sure if they came from here or from the other staircase. Oh, they came from this other staircase. Sorry, they came from oh, here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Never mind. 
Okay, but I still want to notice if there's any like damp tracks like going outward, just so that I have an idea of how many people there might. Uh, you don't need to roll for this. Um, there are no damp damp tracks apart from well, not even you guys left any tracks because of Pass Without Trace, so there's no tracks to be seen. I see. So Is it doesn't look can... like anything happens here. Can we make some sort of check to figure out if uh, shit hits the fan and the original exit is blocked? Can we dive into this river and like exit somewhere else? Huh. Yeah. An, an I understand exit. what you mean. Uh, hmm. Do like... You can do a nature check. You can do one, please. Sure. All right, let's try that. Out. Fourteen. Okay. Uh, anyone else? Anyone? Oh, let me let me try it. Nope, that's a ten. Okay. <coughs> so this stream from this direction goes downwards. Uh, the place where like the 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 stream like divides into two, that they're they're going downwards. So, so you'll feel water resistance from like the upper side of the map, and be pushed downwards. And then, um, based on your check, Homer, you notice that wherever the stream leads, it's like very 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 dark. And in your thought, you're like. <laughs> It's not a good idea to risk like jumping here because we don't know where the stream leads to. Yeah, okay, I'll communicate that with uh, Big Eddie, noticing that he's trying to take up an escape route. Mm. I don't think that's a good idea, Big Eddie. That might just lead us to a waterfall and the bottom. Well, great. I didn't want to take a shower anyway. Mean. All right then, let's just keep this stream in mind. It might be important later. Okay, I guess we can check here now. Okay. So this stone door, Amrutar um, tells you guys that uh, no one is behind the stone door directly. We can push it a bit, and if you push it down, uh. There are there are a few guards, but they're not near. They're not like there are no guards that will be alerted to our presence if we push down the door now. However, I must warn you, there are some people in the far corner. So so do we push down the door? Well, it's either that or we go down the staircase there. I want to see what those dudes are up to. It might be important. Do a strength check, please. Oh man, that's not our strongest thing. Uh, it's, I'll cast Pass Without Trace first, just so okay. that we have a stealth roll advantage uh, uh, later. Okay. And then, okay, I'm the only one with plus one strength, I think, so I'll try this out. See, strength check, right? Yeah, get, yeah. get that old man strength. Yes. Strength. <laughs> oh, before I do pass without trace, I should do guidance. So I'll reverse that order. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, oh, oh no. Oh no, old man. Pretty nice. That's so Let funny. me try to... Let me try to push, but... You just can't push it. Your age, you know, old age is. I know it's catching <laughs> up. Then. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> hey, uh, maybe uh, uh, Ro Rory over here can try it. You want you want me to try it? I'm not I'm not strong. Look at me. Uh, we could. We could push it together. Why we're we'll push it together. We yeah. Do that together. Yeah. Why were we just standing there? Okay, you guys, go, 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 guys. You got it. Good job. 
Big Eddie's just in the All back, right. snacking. Uh, okay, guys. One, two, three. And then... Push. Let's go. <laughs> okay, with my modifier, no. I'm not... That's not... Helpful. <laughs> so am I. Guys! Uh, what is wrong with us, bro? Very, very sad. But I will give it to us. With our combined strength, we were able to move the jar <laughs> a, a jar. So we can squeeze through. Just squeeze oh through. I, yeah. knew you, I knew you guys had it in you. Good job. We will not speak of... You know what? Sure. <laughs> The snacking. Okay. And then... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm back. Yellow. It's okay. yeah. You just... Uh, you just missed... Uh, an old man try to open a door, and then... And then everyone else failing together. And then three... Three <laughs> grown men... Attempting to open the door, and... Yeah. It's... Like, Big the greatest trouble. downfall of any adventuring party doors. Yeah. <laughs> doors. It was it was very unless sad. There, unless their wooden doors had locked. Mm, I can't push this one, fam. Yeah. This is the one door you can't pick lock. <laughs> yeah, the weakness of of, yeah. of rogues. Heavy doors. Yeah. <laughs> but but you were <laughs> But you know, three people, I will give it to you guys. Three people work together to push the door. So we were able to squeeze in a bit. So, so funny. <laughs> now, I shall reveal this part. And hey. here you see a few guards here. You guys can stick your head out together, you know, being a Scooby Doo to look. Great. And. Oh shit, is that Tracy? You see some people. Oh, holy shit! Standing. Uh uh You can. You guys can do a perception check if you wanna like s listen into like a conversation or something. Yes, please. Okay. Sure. okay. I am deaf. Twelve. Twenty-six. Oh, yes. There you go. Oh, well, you're not. Oh. You guys. Okay. So Homer, this one in particular, you're able to overhear. So you see this strange man following the arcane broker. This is the arcane broker, by the way. Mm -hmm. New year, new look. So, mm -hmm. Mr. Daft Punk. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he, in his uh, golden helmet, he walks around and uh, this necromancer. You know, uh, you guys have fairly heard of this necromancer named Tracy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and Tracy follows the arcane broker and is like, I know I owed you for assisting in my resurrection, but are you sure the ritual is safe? And then the arcane broker speaks in a monotone male and female voice. Yes, it is perfectly safe. You'll be assisted by the hags and some of the druids. So summoning the beast of the void won't be a challenge. That's what you hear, Homer. The what in the hell is the beast of the void? Okay, I want you to uh, roll a history check, all of you. And beast of the void history. Beast of the void. Fifteen. Eighteen. Woo! <laughs> Okay, um, Fira and Eddie, um, I guess, uh, for Fira, you've read books about the Beast of the Void, and Eddie, you might have heard of urban legends about this creature. The Beast of the Void, ever since, uh, it's been an urban legend that's been around now for decades around Darren. The Beast of the Void is a creature that disguises itself as a safe place for travelers and uh, people in journeys to, to take refuge in. And this place makes those people disappear, seemingly forever. That Whoa. is the beast of the world. 
And for the players, yeah, well, above Lincoln game, Way, this is. Ten this the is ten the town. Oh, ah, okay, cool. Yeah. This is ten the town when he got corrupted, though. Yeah. This is uh, uh, before he was purified. That's right. so cool. Yeah. All right. So yeah, when uh, when Homer said, "What the hell is Beast of the Void?" I'm um, Fira and Eddie. You guys are. Uh, your your blood froze because you're like they're summoning a cursed place or something. Mm -hmm. What the hell? That is, that is that is not a beast. That is a location. Yeah. So. They're not making they, much sense. I don't think they call it the location of the void. No, no, you don't understand. This is a. Legends speak of a so a quote unquote safe place for travelers, but once they manage to reel in it to said travelers, they disappear. Then it turns, yeah, it's like a Venus fly trap, but a place. It's not it's not a beast or a creature, it's a location. They call it the beast of the void because it's almost like a beast that's eating up people. Yeah. Oh, so must... whatever they whatever they're doing with that, I don't know why. And then, uh, Homer, you you overhear this again. It's like Arcane Broker says, "The Black Dragon will not distract Blightside for long enough. We should head to Skullduggery Island now and summon the beast." Well, that ain't good. I tell them that. That uh, I think we gotta stop them right here, otherwise, they're going to be unloading some kind of piece of the void on the city. So, are we fighting them now? I think it's now or never, friends. <sighs> then the the arcane broker shouts out, You can come out now. I've noticed you for the past few seconds. Been a Shit. while, Mercado. <laughs> right. Oh, damn, he noticed us. Okay. Well, How far in I can we go? The the end. Uh, you guys can go. Hold on. You guys can go over uh, where the train tracks start. Cool. The tracks. Here, cool, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, but before that, uh, as you guys approach, the arcane broker teleports and Trace is like, "Wait, don't leave me!" <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, you guys are, uh, you guys name? are here, and uh, uh, I don't have the tokens over here, but the druids are here and. They seem to be preparing like uh, a portal, which Tracy run towards. And uh, you guys are, uh, I think, I believe Homer can chase after them with the same spell because they just use uh, transport via plants. Um, you guys are actually able to kill these uh, Manticore guys just as easily. So I will be changing the map actually. Ah, oh, got it. Before Cinematic we... fight. Yeah. Um, team, team, team. Tell me how. Tell me a cool thing you can do when you kill these guys. You know, like for for flavor. Oh, bet. You ever see though? You ever see Virgil and Devil May Cry? No. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then they're dead. And then his targets are dead. And then he just like shoots the, the umbrella and then chasing after Tracy. Nice. It's like a flash of blades. That's yeah. cool. Tracy momentarily panics when he saw Fira, for some reason. Oh, you better panic, bitch. <laughs> you Big, better panic. Any, Big Any was just snacking. He didn't join this fight. <laughs> he was like, ah, oh, you, you, you guys got it. <clears throat> oh, God. Uh, what about uh, Harlan and Homer? Um, you cast entangle and like you know make it easier for Fira to do his thing. 
and Man. to Harlan to do his thing too. I think Harlan would cast. This is like dissonant whispers. Um, oh. So they would be like, uh, like holding their heads, and you would see Harlan just sort of like whisper things under his breath. Nice. Oh, so cool. Cool. Scary. <laughs> yeah. We're not losing spell slots and whatever for this DM. It's just cinematic. Yeah, it's it's cinematic. Okay. It's okay. I actually use the spell slot for entangle. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you use an actual spell, then be honest and cut those off. Okay. You know? I will do that. Yeah. So, cast and tank. Alright, you killed a bunch of Manticore fanatics, and... Yeah. And they deserved it for standing <laughs> in your way. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> and, uh... You were able to reach the tree that they used to transport themselves, and Homer... Uh, well, I'm pretty sure you spent time to mark a few trees as well, uh, where, where they'd be going. Or you can also, you know, just use U3 as another exit way. What do you, what do you think you're gonna, which tree are you picking? Um, I'm a bit confused because, like, I was thinking we were going to go through the tree they went, so... I know which uh, place they might be at. Well, you just overheard them say that they're going to Skullduggery Island. That's true. Okay, I'll be using Q3 in Skullduggery right now. Uh, yeah, U yeah, you... U three is there. Yeah. yeah. I'll probably like make him be the point where we teleport, and then just use any one of these random trees here. All right. At that moment, you casted it on uh, on this tree. You, the other side, opens a doorway to the Spearhead Club where you three is, and you guys jump back in and are back at the Spearhead Club, which I will now change the map to. And Har Harlan's like. Ah, oh, thank the gods. I've had enough of nature. Oh my god, I agree with you. Come on, let's cut up some foes. Hush. One last time. <laughs> and now you guys are back. Uh, from Nikolai's viewpoint, you know, you three is just there being a nice decoration at the club. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> you guys explode out of the tree, harmlessly out of you three. <laughs> Oh, hello. Like, oh my god! <laughs> uh, pardon me, pardon me, we are, uh... Hey, if you see a... Just get ready, because if there's a... There's gonna be something happening. Uh, just in case! Big what, Black what Dragon. Are you what are you talking about? And then, when you hear... When you say Big Black Dragon, you just hear in the distance... <laughs> that one. Oh shit. <laughs> Poodles, and then he just, he just scurries off to go chase. Yeah, uh, you guys scurry off, and um, in the marketplace, you see, right outside, you see in the city, you see a, an, a, a black dragon just flying across the city, and people are panicking again, you know, and it's like, oh shit, this is happening again, another dragon attack, and then, you know, the dragon is just like... We just flying around, you know, spitting acid, uh -huh. and then Romeo That's Blightside, fly yeah, Romeo Blightside is flying towards the dragon and just like shooting lightning at it, taunting it to make it, you know, follow him. And then, and then he notices you guys from a distance, and you just hear like, like you could tell he casted a sending spell on you. He casted it to. Homer, and then Homer, you hear this uh, Romeo tell you, like, follow me to the forest away from the city. All right, I'll do that. Um, yeah. yeah. I communicate that with my party. Okay. So, so yeah, yeah he thought the, the, the dragon flies away enough from the city and is chasing Romeo, and you guys are running as fast as you can. And uh, as you uh, run, you're, you're running towards the forest area. 
of of the city and into the deep woods you also notice that uh the rock the, the whole group is also running uh and keeping track of the battle as well and uh suddenly uh you guys briefly uh this is just cinematic but you guys briefly exchange fire you know rogues and bard versus druids you know exchanging fire with each other and uh you know it's like a pinna shoot out but with magic and then finally uh you guys reach a specific area in the in the woods which i would like to call mushroom hill and in mushroom hill you see all these creatures gathered around uh they're all uh standing before you guys i want you guys to arrange your tokens here in this area okay so see, bu boom hey where am i oh i only have the old one how far forward can we be uh you can be until uh just where you're standing eddie cool yo cool yo yippers why are the uh Sotiras here? Yeah, guys, you guys notice something very disturbing. Oh no! Three members of the dead Sotiris, and for some reason, their bodies are clearly animated with magic. Oh no! Biz oh, Vigil's goodness. not gonna like that. He is not. Yeah. Naughty behavior. Naughty, naughty. Tracy, bad. Naughty, naughty. Bad Tracy. Yeah. Bad Tracy. He's gonna, he's gonna get it. He's gonna very, very bad behavior. And then, is this a, that, is this a token or, or right, is it just a black? Is it just a black circle? Oh, that's just a black circle. Oh, okay. Um, in the far corner, you just see. Three hacks and Tracy just chanting this thing. They're doing like some sort of ritual, and you see just like this black hole. Just yeah. Okay. Scary. Yeah, and then uh, in the uh, yeah, this is uh, this is what's happening, and uh, I would like you all to. Roll initiative. Let's go. Please. Aw, shit. That Wait, we do it in the begin. begin. Okay, go. Go, Link. Yeah. Oh, no, wait. We didn't end the last one. I have to in it end first. More forest? We just left one. That's... In it. What? Again. In it. Okay, now everyone can Boom. join. Oh, by the way, Teach was with you guys, but during the shootout with Barack, um, he got injured and he told you guys to move on forward. Cool. He got shot in the knee. <laughs> oh no. Not the knee. But it'll be fine. Yeah, but it's not It'll be fine. It's it's far from the heart, so... So I don't think I can do the in a join thing. Hi. Or otherwise in it... Add... Uh, you do exclamation mark beyond space and then your character sheet link first. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There we go. That's yeah. the thing. They still have Gal or Astra. Huh? Oh, that's a lot of characters. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> They're all in weights. They're all in, like, the Terran. Um, there we go. There, there, let's go. There They're all we in Go. They're all in Taryn. Oh <laughs> but the asa ho mga rolls, oi, di muda. Oh no. Bad luck showing, you know. This is why. Yeah. This is why he was like, he "Fuck these dead. woods." This is why yeah. he fell in the pool. <laughs> 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 I thought. Why he's not a rogue. I thought halflings were supposed to be lucky. <laughs> <laughs> you're only lucky when you roll a natural one. Fucking shit. That's so bad. <laughs> you guys go ahead. <laughs> okay, I shall roll two for the Treons, the Durak, and Sotiris. 
Yeah, it was a bummer that Carlo couldn't join because I was like, <coughs> yeah, I'm a surprise him, um, you know, yeah. No, uh, it's okay, Carlo, you can, you can... go loads. <laughs> go loads. <laughs> what? Okay. Uh, uh, that's all I can say, loads. Kaya mo yan. I'm wondering how would Mika and uh, Kath would react about the seeing Tracy again. Oh, you like know my reaction. I want to yeah. throw hands again, bro. You're like, ew, yeah. why did you do this? Mika. One Mika year will, in the making. Mika will suddenly act like Salia, even though it's Vendetta. Okay. <laughs> okay, suddenly, Vendetta, I mean, Vendetta morphs into Salia. I'm like, oh, who are you? <laughs> okay. Dun, 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 dun. So I've rolled the treants are... The treants rolled... Oh, let me share the what I wrote. And before we full on start, let us let us take a break because Cold. I need to play. Cool. Yeah, oh same, my god! Same. Oh my god! What does the blasphemy blade look like? Because I have an idea for what. Because the, the moment blade. I was like, the blasphemy blade basically looks like a a black great sword, all black, and it's. Have you seen this type of weapon? One. Wait, let, me, uh, let, me, uh, let me find this weapon. It's a okay. sword with the word called. blasphemy on it. Neba. Very nice graphic design. Yeah. <laughs> graphic design is my passion. <laughs> graphic oh. design is my passion. Very nice. Uh... <laughs> oh my god. What do you call that sword? Let me let me just <laughs> Okay, be right back guys. I need to pee. What is the name of that sword? What is the name of that sword? What a bad gen gonna go. <laughs> ah, it's so great. Is blasphemy and papyrus written on the sword? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, great. Pum pum paradam. I'm so glad the Tracy's back. Actually. Oh my god. That's I want that's this is what I want for his character. It's just like he's not very threatening, so you can kill him easily. And then he, but he just comes back, you know, cuz he's got yeah. He's got clone jars everywhere. <laughs> he just comes back. This is great. Bum, bum, ba -da -dum, bum, bum, bum. Okay, I'm excited. I'm excited to try out this build. I'm excited to. I'm excited to use the blade. <laughs> the great sword. That is a cool image. Oh, that... That's the image. <clears throat> uh, the one I put on the chat. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, dude. Uh, Trandafira with the blasphemy blade. Where oh. is that? I don't see it. Not there. yet. No, Not yet. Well, well, I'm just imagining uh, it in my head. In my mind's uh, eye. Okay. In my mind's eye. Uh, <laughs> but just know he requires two hands to hold it. And he has how many hands in a form? That's cool. You have more hands than you need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, do you my need a sister... hand? <laughs> <laughs> I swear, my, my sister is funny. Because like, she doesn't usually watch anime, right? But then, for some reason, her class told her that you have to watch a silent voice and do like a reaction paper to it. What? And now she's what? Yeah, I'm like, what a weird assignment. And then, and my sister is like, did you see it? Can you tell me? I'm like, watch it. And it's like, I don't want to watch in subtitles. And I gave her the link to like a dubbed version. Yeah. And then, and then now she's having a hard time following the names because the names are in Japanese. And I'm like. Why don't you just watch in subtitles? I'm like, no, I don't want to read. I'm like, pick a struggle. <laughs> <laughs> right? 
Wala ka pili og struggle imong sister to patay. But yeah, she's that watching so it on her weird. phone at the moment and I'm like, okay, you know. The teacher just wants I bet the teacher's a weeb and just wants to spread I the know, right? spread the weeb. I know, I was like of all movies, why aside I mean of it's a nice movie, yeah, but like why? Anyway. Anyway. Char. Graphic Seven design boys. is my passion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know, cool. uh, is everyone back? Yeah. I'm back. I'm ready to go. Ready? Alright. First, oh my gosh. First is Eddie. So, Eddie, it's your turn and Homer, please prepare. Okay. Uh, so, Eddie's uh, like. Uh. Oh. Oh dear, okay, uh, I'm gonna help you guys out this time because uh, it seems like a lot and I really need to, I really need to stretch. He keeps his dried fish in his like tracksuit and then he takes out a rock and then uh, it's an arcane rock and then he kind of like does like a finger gesture on it as if it's a touch screen, right? And Aww. then it plays music. So this is him activating his blade song. <laughs> And nice. then, and then he's like, "Yeah, so uh, whenever I get into a fight, I always bring my rock man." <laughs> so, so, so he plays, he plays, uh, uh, Tony Byler's "I Need a Hero." <laughs> oh my god! Okay, give yourself a wish bone. Yeah. So that's his bonus action. Uh, now he has a movement speed of 50 because he has a base feed of 40. So it's 30 feet plus 10 from the mobile feet and then Blade Song gives him another 10 feet. So he's he has 50 feet of movement. And we hear in the background tin, 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 tin. And then as an action, he will cast the spell uh, Long Strider to give him another 10 feet of movement. So he now can move 60 feet. <clears throat> and Whoa. him casting the spell is just singing to the lyrics of the song, you know. Where are all the good men gone? <laughs> and then... Uh, Very nice. So that's his bonus action, action. And he's going to move 60 feet. Uh, will he want to move now? You know what? He's going to... He's going to chill there, I think. Uh... He's gonna chill there for now. So he's just rocking to uh, I Need a Hero. I need a hero! And turn. Nice. Alright. Uh, next is Homer's turn. And uh, Fira, please prepare. Uh, the train will come before you, though. So, Homer, your turn. Alrighty. So, there's a lot of enemies. I need to have hit points to uh, uh, like supplement how few we are. So I'm gonna be casting uh, Conjure Animals. But uh, no. I need your help with this one because I know you don't want it to be too many animals. So what oh. do you recommend, DM? I'm thinking I wanna beefy. Say, I want to say like maybe four at most, and then the beasts could be. Uh, they can be what what cr would be if it's for animals below help me with this oh yeah hold on let me bring up the spell spell conjure animals oh no i put animales animales oh. there you go it's okay. spanish or beasts that would be one half and lower and there are some recommendations listed here apes black bears crocodiles giant goats so on so forth I think ape would be a good choice here. Yeah, I think ape too. So you can summon the apes. Alright, unfortunately I don't have an ape token, so for now I'm just going to be using this as an ape. Okay. okay. Yeah, no, um, I'll just use the orc tokens as quote-unquote apes for now. Okay. Okay, the range um, of the spell, 60 feet. Ah, okay. So... 
for 60 up until there, no? Okay. So, one, two, three, four. Oh, wait, what is that? Wow, why are there? Wow, wow. okay. I, I got your apes. One. Hang on, hang on. Oh, you one, ape two. You guys notice um the middle Soteris that was resurrected, that guy is Sasibaka. So now you finally met him. So yeah. Sasibaka. Well Sasibaka. nice to meet you, but <laughs> Yeah. His his proper debut as a corpse. Where are all the good men gone? And the uh, Raph, if I'm yeah. not mistaken, you want them to go on my turn as well, no? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna put Homer plus Apes then. Oh god, what happened to my... Alrighty. Where's okay. Street <laughs> this, this is the debut of my Conjure oh, Animals, please. so bear with me, folks. Alright, and then after that, or rather before that, I should actually say the incantation, which is Spirits of the Day, take the shape of beasts! And hey. then they appear as apes over here to surround this one druid over there. Okay. Yeah, and then, um, let's see, any bonus actions I can do? No needs healing yet. So I'm just gonna move a bit closer because, like, we're too far away from Tracy and the rest, and I don't like what they seem to be doing. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. That's uh, the end of Homer's turn. Uh, I'll do Feather's turn first because that's also pretty fast. Okay. 5, okay. 10, 15, 20, 30, 35, 30. And then it's going to be helping Fira against Therese Undead. Oh, okay. Yeah. Poor Toby. Yeah, so sad. Oh, hold on. That was the wrong. 30 feet. 45. Uh, 50, 55, 60. will be over there, station. And now, right. finally, the apes. I should have prepared the bestiary link ahead. But I'm preparing it now. Uh, Raph, what rolls do they need to make in order to hit? I'll be just averaging it up. Uh, uh it'll be fast. Just, just do their their monkey the ape stats, please. Oh, what I mean is what do I need to roll for my to hit? Because their their bonus is plus five, so um, oh. however the number of hits I will multiply that by six because that's how much damage they do on average the fist. Ah oh. Yeah, but we don't have to roll a lot. <laughs> okay, so you just wanna roll one d20 and then just no, no, multiply. No. What do you like, mean? Um, so, um, my bonus is five, and maybe yeah, their AC yeah. is like fifteen or something. So uh -huh. I need to roll a ten in order to hit with each ape. So, oh. Yeah. Okay. Something like that. That's my number that I need to reach. Okay, so just roll like 4d20s, I guess, and then decide. Ah, okay. R, 4d, attack, 13, 5, 11, 14. I, so plus 5, that's 18, 10, 16, and 19. Okay. Uh, 16 and 19 hit. Oh dear, only 16 and 19 hit, guys. Okay, yeah. so... She takes 6 damage, so 2 hits, that makes her 12 damage. There, there we go. go. Okay, that was pretty fast. And that's the end of the turns. The apes yeah. will just stay there to crowd her. The apes <laughs> try to swing at her, but she's able to expertly fend them off with her staff. But 2 strikes got her. <laughs> <clears throat> and Alrighty. Next will be the treants, which I hope you guys noticed. And uh, Homer, one th this treant will come towards you and try to pummel you. 
All right, bring it on. Okay. Korean. Should, should put a concentration token, right? Yeah. The chant is gonna be. Well, you know what it's gonna do. It's gonna be slamming it. Let's see here. I'm gonna roll in my not so secret <laughs> server dice. Okay. First hit that hits. Second hit. My AC is 19 now, by the way. Yeah, okay, but I rolled so 29 and 23, so... <laughs> okay. So, yeah, um... The Treant curls its fist, its wooden fist, and starts hitting you right in the... arms. <laughs> On the shoulder. You know, hoping to dislocate it. All and right. then... Uh, you take both damages, which is equal to. Gonna roll it now. Oh wow! Oh wow! You get thirty-four total damage. Okay, what's the amount that I need to roll for concentration for each hit? Uh. How do we usually calculate it? Since it's 34, it's like, is it 17? Am I correct? Is it 34 or... for each attack? No, it's 34 total. total. Oh, um, well, can you divide it by base, oh. based on the number of attacks? Okay, like... uh, the, attack, the first one was 12, so and then the other is 22. So that's... Okay. Uh... So 10 and then 11. Oh, okay. Do that. All right. Um, that's on the first. Oh, I lost my animals. It happens. Damn. Okay. Unfortunate. Then concentration is lost. Yeah. You notice. Know you notice know one of the druids directed the tree and to do that. And it was wagging its finger at you. Oh, unfortunate. Fine, 34 damage total, I'm gonna mark that now. Yeah. Okay. And then the second Treant will try to attack Eddie, but I wanna make sure I... Uh, how, much, how much do I... I guess 30 feet, so that is... 5, 10, 15, okay, I, I make it. And then, yeah, uh, brace yourself, Eddie. You'll be taking two strikes as well. Okay. 19 AC. <clears throat> okay. What? What? I hit, I hit you twice. Cool. I'm... I'm rolling high, guys. I'm I'm sorry. You can stop. I don't know what to do. It's okay, my dude. It's our fate. It's uh, you get 19 from the first and 17 from the second hit. Sheesh, plus 17. 36 damage taken. I'm not concentrating Ouch. on anything yet. Oh, okay. actually, can I? Can you? Uncanny dodge that. As a reaction, do I want to do that? Yeah, you want to use your reaction, I guess. Do I want to reaction now? My next, yeah, I'll I'll use my reaction now. Okay, so you have which one? The first attack or the second? Wait, sorry, no, I don't have it. I'm still a level four rogue. Oh, okay, gotcha. Uh, no. I cannot absorb elements that nope nope yeah this is the I'll this just get a, I'll just get hit bush, bush, oh yeah exactly and that ends the tree and stern but uh, is buns back now I but hello can someone stream for me because I'm going to be outdoors oh wow wow okay. oh wow so, my plan is 
So the last thing I saw was Miss Ma'am Therese is in front of me. Well, yeah. in range, right? Uh, I am in range for an Eldritch Blast? Yeah. yeah. You can move. I mean, melee range. You can move 30. F- How much is your movement, Gunny? Yeah, 35 feet. 30. 30. That's not enough, my dude. She's 40. Oh, it's not away. enough. Yeah. He's 40. Never Wait, mind, just didn't you? Chair, didn't bro. you actually? Didn't you like start like five feet ahead forward, Gamay? <laughs> did I? Even if he did, it would be uh, it short. No, no one's here. Reach, okay. Bug bear, man's here. Right. Okay. Yeah, bug bear. So this treant that's harassing. Um. Other uh, two treants too. Oh, yeah. Where there are the tree nearby? I will. And hello, phone Discord. Okay, there we go. I will. I go near it, and then that thing already made its turn, right? Yeah, the trees. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I'll just be within range for my sneak attack, and then I will activate the form. Uh. Then, okay. First, let's do. Oh, I'm talking one. Let's do bonus action. First, I need to your your form of dread. Yep. Okay. I need to uh... form of dread. <laughs> okay. I will change. I'm gonna hit it then into form of dread. And then I am going to hit him with the. Okay, as you. When he turns into this monstrous form, he, two of his arms is gonna make some form of effort, and then he's gonna pull out the blas- the blasphemy blade, but holding it with two hands from what looks to be a rift, and he's gonna swing down at the at the tree. Okay. Well, let me let me roll something. Yeah, roll to attack, please. Roll to attack. What is this? Wow, that's a really ass. Oh my god. Uh, because he's not used to it. He's just like, oh, this is heavier than I thought. And he's gonna miss. Mm. Uh, what did you roll? Nine. Nine. Okay, that doesn't hit. Yeah. And I guess that's, that's, yeah, that's his turn for now. Okay. Next is Harlan's turn. Uh, Harlan is going to look a little bit confused. And he's like... Do I go for the three weird ones in the front or the trees? Uh, hit anything you can reach. Uh, Harlan's like, right. Um, and then he's going to take his loot, kind of like strum it. And then he is going to cast Bane on the treant. May, if possible, the two treants and the these three. What are they're just bad general bad guys? The baddies, yeah. These three guys, yeah. Baddies. Okay. All right. Um. Uh. So I'm gonna cast Bane on them. Mm-hmm. You have to move a bit forward if you wanna cast. Yeah. Some of the satirists. Yeah. 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 I'll go here. And then, uh, three, yeah, I'll cast it at the third level. Um, they will need to do charisma saving throws. Okay. Uh, and what's your spell save BC? It's like 17, right? 17, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oof. Oof. That's high. <laughs> and I'm my soul. Let's see, let's see how it goes. Oh, crap, and I don't, <laughs> I don't have a modifier for this. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> Let's go. Let's okay, go. So, so Savior will do it first. He fails. And then... Fail. Baka will do it. He passes. No. <laughs> Fail. And Therese fails. So... Fail. Uh, Xavier and Therese are... Baned. Baned. Okay. Uh, 
What about the Treants? They're also... Yeah, they're also... Well, I don't know. Did they pass? Uh, I haven't rolled for them yet, but they do have a charisma of plus one. So we shall see. Treants have a charisma <coughs> of plus one? Yeah, apparently yeah, based tree, on their stats. Trees are, trees are, you know, pretty. But they're not <laughs> gonna pass the bot. Yeah, they passed. Okay, they failed. They failed. So everyone but Sashi Baka failed. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, and then as a bonus action, um, he's going to look at uh, Big Eddie and say, "Let's see what you Carponis are worth," and then uh, cast uh, Bardic Inspiration on him. Ooh. Oh, and wink. Just ooh. Ooh, yeah. So Bardic Inspiration for Big Eddie. And then that's my turn. Is that nice. a 1D, 1D what? 6, 8? One, one is... D8. Gosh, I haven't... It is a 1D... Where? My laptop no like. It's a 1D10! What? Okay. Nice. Thank you, thank okay. you. Next will be the Darak's turn, and Darak. yeah, they will unleash their powers. Uh, unleash. One of them moves forward and tries to cast Burning Hands at uh, at Harlan. So, <laughs> Harlan, you will have to do a Dex save, I believe. Oh. Dude, I rolled a nat fucking one. Oh, no, no way! <laughs> I'm uh, rolling so bad tonight. Halfling, this is so halfling oh, luck. Okay. This is not halfling luck. This is gamblers. <gasps> oh wait, can I can I can I lucky that as a uh, yeah. halfling's luck? Yeah. 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 Go yeah. All right, I'm gonna do it again. <clears throat> watch, watch it be a nat twenty. It's a twenty-two. Nice. Oh, hi, we're close enough. It's close a dirty enough. something. Yeah. Nice. You get only three points of fire damage because he rolled low. Excellent. Hey. My coat. Yeah. And then it lights your cigar. Oh, true. It lights your cigar. <laughs> yeah. Oh, mm. nice. It's so cool. And then the next druid uh, is cornering Homer for setting a bunch of monkeys at her. And she'll be casting Thunder Wave, I think. Yeah, Thunder Wave. Thunder Wave. In a, in a position that hits both Feather and Homer, unfortunately. Unfortunate. Thunder Wave. Doesn't she have to be a bit closer for that? It's like a 15 foot cube. Let me check. You're right. You are right, and I will. Uh, come can closer. Be done, but yeah, she has to be closer, I think. She shall come closer. So she was here. Come closer. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Come closer. She'll come hit Therese. Closer. Yeah, she'll hit Therese, but she doesn't care. Mm. So she raises her arms and lightning strikes her from the sky and a bolt and a shockwave electricity hits homer feather and Terry. and y'all get have to do a con, a con save please uh feather does need to it's dead yeah <gasps> feathers, unfortunate the violence. Therese okay. will make that save with a minus 1d4. Yappers. Because of the bean. <clears throat> I'll take that full damage, man. Unfortunate. Okay, so Therese, she has to do that, but minus a d4, right? Yeah, 1d4. Okay. So. She rolls 19, but minus a d4. Oh, she passes. Unfortunate. Um, the DC is 12, by the way. So, Homer, did you pass? Did I roll 4? Oh, fucking yeah. hell. Okay. Unfortunate. 
Okay, the roll, the total roll is 2d8. It is. That's a 14. So, oh, Therese gets bad. 7. Therese gets 7. And as the spell says, you guys are pushed 10 feet away from her. Ooh. I, uh, there's a treant in my way, so how does this work? Oh shit! shit. I think yeah. the, the, the treant's supposed the to get included. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sharing is scaring, so. <laughs> sharing is scary. <laughs> yeah. This this oh, druid's shit. not very battle smart. <laughs> yeah. Cool, uh, the treant is also bane, so he'll get a minus d4. Yeah. Doesn't doesn't know anything about uh battle positioning and shit. Yeah. Oh, bro, th th these treants, man, they, they pass too. What? Even with a uh, bane, they're good. So. Sheesh. Seven damage. Yeah, seven damage only. You gotta stop rolling well, Ruff. I'm sorry, I don't know what to do. <laughs> this makes okay, up for you. all those times that you rolled terribly, though. Yeah. There, I'm pushed 10 feet away, I think. And then you get pushed 10 feet away, too. There we go. And so is Therese. There we go. Cool. Uh, up next, the other druids come in too. I'll have them come a bit closer and... Come closer. Um, come closer. That's, that's the song. Come closer. And let, me, let me see if I can... I can entangle you all. Oh no. Oh no, I think I can. From this no. ring. Okay guys, I'm entangling all of you. Please do a strength saving throw. Please beat 12. Please beat 12. 13. Strength saving throw. <laughs> uh, which one are concentrating my dude? Oh, Put a concentration marker on. Eight. My gosh. Uh, One. Oh. All three of them uh, make sure to cover the whole place. So Sheesh. yeah, everyone, everyone from Harlan and Trandafira and yeah, including the Treant itself. Restrained, no? Yeah. Sheesh. Oh dude, 12, okay. <laughs> this is, this is bad. <coughs> uh, wait, am I restrained too, dude? No, 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 you're not included. Okay, I'm not included. Yeah. Restrained. They... I think they wanna... They wanna save you for last. They wanna, like, bully you, I think. They wanna bully you. Do on Druid violence, you know? You should... Okay, okay. You should try to join them, Homer. Yeah, I'm good. Oh my god, the Korean saved. So he's not restrained. That's bull. That's bull. I'm sorry, it's there in the server. You can look, you can, you also see it, so... No, no, I believe you. I'm just saying it's bull. Yeah. It's so... This is so gross behavior. Gross behavior. Okay. Uh, all right, that's that's all. That's there. I, let me just put markers uh, just to make sure no one gets confused. Uh, I will... Which ones are concentrating? I did. I can put the markers for concentrating. The, the three of them are concentrating on like different fields of restraint. Oh, I have. Th I passed. I, pa I got a 13 on a strength save though. Oh, so you're good. You're good. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. it's just Eddie and Harlan. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, Harlan. What is go. this spell again? Entangled, right? Yeah, entangled. Yeah. So there's a bunch of like vines and beneath us. Yeah. Oh, no, dude, it's a bunch of Rapunzel's hair. No, ew. <laughs> a bunch of, a what? Bunch of wig. That's creepier for me. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> a bunch of, for flavoring, a bunch of roots just erupt from the ground and, like, you know, grab you guys. And those roots are having, they're like hand shaped creepily enough. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, next is the Sotiri's turn. And they're going to be gunning for Homer. All three of them. All three of them. All old man violence. Yeah. 
They're being anti oh, old. Violent. Ever yeah. seen that cutscene of like SpongeBob where everyone's beating up an old man? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Oh my about? god, yeah. <laughs> Five. Oh, so seven, dumb. Eight, yeah, I remember eight. that. And then. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Will Savior reach us? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. He's not. He's not, but whatever. Okay. So Therese will... Uh, she will grab a Japanese short sword and try to stab you. Alright, 19 AC. Let's go. I might draw low, guys, so let's hope for that. Yeah. Uh, Therese. Okay. Second hit. Nice. So Therese tries to swing her short sword at you, but you were able to dodge it. Both strikes. And this is even without Bane, so you're good. Yeah, without Bane. Uh, next is Sussy Baka. We will see. We will see. Okay, one doesn't hit because I don't need Bane for that. He rolled a seven. And then there's one. Okay. Oh, he's not Bane, so he's fine. Oh, okay. Well, even without Bane, he misses, so that's good too. And <laughs> yeah, he also pulls out a Japanese short sword and tries to stab you, but. Homer, you've been practicing with your rogue friend, so you're able to dodge, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, good. Like, Keeping dodge. up with the youngsters. Yeah. <laughs> like, there was a training sequence where Tej, Sorka, Vigil, and Fira just tried stabbing you, and they're like, you have to practice how to dodge, old man, like the rest of us. So. <laughs> yeah. Dust bunny far away shooting rubber bullets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. Shit. Yeah, meanwhile... The rest of us are just using really pointy objects. Yeah, <laughs> this is uh, this is Homer's highlight <coughs> arc. We have to, there's like a flashback of like overshadow just like trying to stab him and he's dodging. <laughs> it's a cool cinematic as the Sotiris are stabbing him and there's like a cut shot of like you know Vigil trying to right. hit him or yeah, you know. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Next that's is funny. next is uh. Yeah, and then when Dusk Bunny is shooting, this other guy is with his crossbow, you know, there's a parallel there. Oh, you know? that's cool. Oh, this guy rolled a 21. Let's see if uh, Bane will help. Oh, fuck, wait. D4. As long as he rolls Roll three. high on the D4 Aww. also. Fuck, he rolled a 1. That's so ridiculous. That's if yeah, you're gonna dude. roll high on the D20s, roll high on the D4 too. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Like this should be the rule. <laughs> where is the justice, guys? <laughs> Ridiculous. But yeah. I take this damage. Let's do this. We got um. Unfortunately, yeah. In the flashback, Dust Bunny shot you with those rubber bullets, and so did this guy. <laughs> yeah. And I just say, ah, oh, I missed it again. <laughs> yeah. All right, and uh, that finishes the first round. But there's a cutscene because Ooh. the four, Ooh. the four, uh, the three hags and Tracy are once again chanting and walking around the black circle. They're chanting languages of ancient languages from Taran. To the and window. When you guys look, you look for a bit. You notice that. The hags and even Tracy are coughing up blood from their mouth as they're chanting this this ritual. And then in the sky far ahead, you see the black dragon and Romeo just fighting on top, exchanging like as uh, acid breath and lightning at each other. And a storm seems to be brewing in nature. Nature is being thrown off balance somehow. So yeah, top of the round, guys. It is once again Eddie's turn. Okay. Okay. Uh, Eddie <clears throat> has zero moon, but he's gonna ca try to cast a spell as a okay. bonus action. He's gonna cast a Shardalon Stride. 
Yes. At fifth level. Okay. Uh, so he's singing the song. I need a hero. And then you get uh, Trandafira beside you. You just see Eddie burst into flames, bzz, green flames. Uh, oh. Specifically around his feet. So DM. Um, yeah. I don't know how uh, you're gonna rule this interaction because there are vines okay. everywhere and roots, and now Eddie's feet are on fire. Uh, does it burn away the vines and shit and he can move? Or does he still need to make uh, a, another strength check to to move away? <clears throat> I want this to happen, but also like... Hmm. hmm. Okay, because there's fire and it's burning the vines, which is made of wood. Maybe do a strength check with advantage. Okay. I'll take yeah. that. Check strength ADV. I rolled a four DM. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay. So um the restrained condition cancels out any any benefit I get from speed. So I still have zero speed, but once I get yeah. out of this restrained uh condition, he has ninety feet of movement. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that yeah. was bonus action and action to try to leave. Uh, that's it. That's all he can do. Uh, he just keeps on singing. I need a hero. Uh, Homer, oh, help me. <laughs> <laughs> you think all you right. need help? Look at this, my dude. <laughs> yeah. All right. And then, uh, yeah, Homer, it's your turn now. <laughs> Okay, uh, first things first, I'll I'm be using... Hmm. I need a lot of healing, so I'm going to be using six of my uh, Balm of the Summer Court D6s. Oh. Yeah, I need a lot of healing, dude. 6 D6. Yeah. 28. Oof. Okay, that's some much needed health. Uh, when you use Bomb of the Summer Court, uh, Lincoln, uh, as you were getting injured and feeling a bit weak, you notice certain pre a certain presence or a voice just hearing in your head telling you to surrender. It was quick, but you thought you, thought you heard surrender and another voice saying give up. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. I ignore that because I'm yeah. not a fucking coward. Oh. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> All right, so use six of that. I'm doing some bookkeeping here. Okay. And then I'm not in a good position. There's a lot of people around me, so I'm There's gonna a lot of pull food. off a Southern Isle here and become a giant ape. Whoa. Yeah, oh no! <laughs> okay, go. All right, so that was my bonus action first, and then uh, let me see if there's a somatic and material component polymorph. There is. Okay, so with that, um, he didn't have the staff on hand first, but he takes the staff from like the back where he has like a sash for it. He raises up the staff as he incants, Embody the spirit of the wild! And then he smashes the staff down, and as he does, Fae spirits will appear. As, he, as soon as he smashes the ground, Fae spirits appear all around him, and they make him like transform. Um, there's like a bright green light that emanates, and then as that happens, you can see like. Um, his shape is being shifted into like the form of a giant. Nice. Yeah. That's Thanks for the giant name token, my dude. <laughs> it's party yeah. time. It's party time. Yeah. All right. That's his form over there. I do have to put that I'm concentrating, which could be okay. problematic. Could be <laughs> um, problematic. Okay. Right. A large giant. Ah, huge. A huge. Okay. 
Dude. Somewhere, somewhere in Taran, you know, Satanao sneezes and <laughs> you know, it's like, excuse me, cover your mouth when you do that. <laughs> Alrighty, okay, so um, yeah, he's a giant ape right now, and I guess I should have done this before I <laughs> uh, transform, but I'm going to be threatening these dudes, so I'm gonna do that now. Uh, you can take opportunity attacks with them if you need to. Ooh, you're gonna you're gonna go away from Saucy Baka and Therese. I need to be threatening these dudes because they're the ones concentrating on that entangle. Alright. I might roll low, so let's see. Well, you don't have to roll very high. I'm a giant ape. Oh, there we go. So, uh, Therese and... Wait, Therese rolled 12. And well, so did Fussy. Uh, uh, 12 still hits. Wow. Uh, giant Ape's you, AC is 12, dude. <laughs> They're just a uh, sack yeah. of hit points. Do you wanna maybe use your Clover Leaves or something, or will you take the hits? Mm. Clover Leaves? I mean Wishbone, sorry. <laughs> uh, what's your rate for this one? Are we following 3 is to 1? No, we're still following 2 is to 1. I'm following Season 1's thingy. Ah, uh, okay. I'll, I'll gladly spend 4 for that. Nice! Alrighty, so they both miss instead. Yeah. Okay. And then and, I uh, kind of wrap around here then. Yeah, so. as, as you do that, you know, there's another hilarious flashback of the same training sequence, but now Overshadow trying to hit you as a giant ape. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow they miss instead of hit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, alright. Um, Apparently, the bigger you are, the harder to hit. Yeah. <laughs> Ready, so... Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, and 40. That's as far as I can go. Okay. Rock another opportunity attack along the way. Okay, that should do. Alright. How's everything, man? Action, bonus action, and... There we go! Next will be... The Treants. And... Uh... The Treants are... Uh... Going to focus on... On Harlan and Fira this time. <laughs> so... Uh, one will go... It will stop right here. And then the other one is going to try to hit... The Treant won't move, the one near Eddie. It will try to hit Fira. And will I roll high this time? Hopefully not. Uh, I mean, hopefully but, not. You, yeah, you can because, stop. Yeah, yeah because... Okay. It, Please. <laughs> very, very problematic if I hit. So... It's very homophobic if you hit me. It's very weird. <laughs> Shit. Very. So, so I rolled a 16 and a 5. 16 so I hit. I think, no, but this, the, I rolled like a 2d20s in my server, and then that that's like a plus 10. So that's a 26 and a 15 hit. Ah, no, boong. 15 <laughs> doesn't hit, 20 doesn't okay. hit. Okay, okay. There we go. Only one hit, so. Okay, 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 Rana. Half homophobic. So half homophobia, you know, yeah. <laughs> not, not completely cancelled, so... Not really, not yet. One no, more hit. No, no. Oh, by the yet. way, yeah. the one that did 21, did they roll for Bane? Oh shit, yeah! Wait, 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 maybe I'll... Maybe Bane, I'll... Will, it change? will it do anything? Will it do anything? 17 or 80? Ah, okay. Um, yeah, okay, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah 18... You get 18 dam damage. 18, okay. I'll yeah. take it for now. Take and it. the Trent with the 7 damage, it's gonna, it's gonna throw a rock at um, Harlan. <laughs> okay. Very, very violent. I have yeah. advantage for Harlan being restrained, Sag. Oh, yeah. 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 That's okay. Try long, try long. 
So, I, I, I might fail. Yeah, he's banned. Yeah, uh, he's wait, banned. wait, wait. Is the triant themselves the all restrained? No, diba? He saved his strength. No, the triant, the one that's seven damage, it's not restrained. It's outside. This one, is it Red restrained? Time. The other one, that's... I think it passed. I think it passed because I remember uh, we were saying like unfair ka ayo. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Because then it so, would have been like a flat thing. roll. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So so let's see. This is with advantage. My goodness, this reminds me of that one combat in Content of Gathering where everyone is like okay. being a mess. Seventeen. This is seventeen hit Harlan. Was that baned? Oh wait, not yet. But I think it will. I think I think it will be if it's a D four. Oh, um, fuck! I rolled one again. Okay, the sixteen hit you. Shit. Uh, sixteen hits, but oh. Harlan Harlan will use silvery barbs as a reaction. Yes. Nice. Oh. I missed. And that then spell. he'll say, "Your flies open." <laughs> 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 oh my god. Imagine imagine Treebeard from Lord of the Rings just checking his crotch for a while in confusion. Yeah. Now he needs to roll it a D20. Yeah, I need to roll a D20. Let's see. Just a D20, right? Yeah, just the D20 and use the lower roll. Okay. Nice, I rolled a five, so he misses. Awesome. <laughs> and, and then um, I'll give back myself back. Uh, uh, I'll give it to uh, Trandavira for the um, uh, oh God, next cool. uh, for, for the for the advantage on your next attack roll. Nice. Wait, what did you? Nice, do? nice. Okay. Um, so yeah. I from the silvery barbs, I give you advantage on the next attack roll. Oh, love bond. Let's go. Oh my God, you're <laughs> the bard this time. Yeah. <laughs> and then he'll just point at you and go, "I'm an ally." <laughs> nice, nice, wow. and I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> it's late, guys. My brain is going places now. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, let's see. What happens now is uh, we haven't moved right, so it should be my turn. Yeah, it's your turn now. Yeah. Okay. I think the trains are done. Yeah. Thank you for the advantage, Lutz. And let me let me see if I can hit this guy. Because if I do, so that did not. <gasps> not 20 plus 2. <gasps> that hits. Yeah. Not 20 plus 2. Let me Ooh. let me do. Okay, for, let, let's do this nice. one by one. With yeah. Blade. Nice. Yeah. yeah. The Double sneak needs attack. To roll. Yeah, the triad needs to roll a wisdom save against my DC 15. And. What was that thing for Blasphemy Blade? Yeah, the wounding thing. Yeah, the wounding thing. Let me roll damage lang sabi para ako an. Para I can Wait, get this out the, of the way. Would the sneak attack be with the great sword thingy? Yeah, I don't know. Mark. It would. It's not a finesse weapon. Yeah, no, it. Yeah, not but, a finesse. But packed yeah. weapon, no. Hmm. I don't know. Pack, what is, pack what is hex weapon that? thing, whatever. It's yeah. the packed weapon. Yeah, it's. Yeah, but it's I mean, not, not a hex blade. Weapon. Not it, it, I'm not a hex blade patron, pero I'm a kwan. Yeah, I know what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, no long. Yeah. Regular long? Yeah, regular. Kay, it's not a finesse weapon. That yeah. should be. Sigi down. Finesse. 17 plus. What the fuck was that? Sneak attack. Don't oh, make 5D6. No sense. 17 plus. Pila na loads 18 plus. Shit. One, okay. 1D12. 1D 2D12. Because. Blasphemy Blade. Yeah, crit. That's uh. Pila mana. Oh my god. How many did I roll? 18 plus 17. Oh. I thought yeah, Walai sneak attack, what happened? 17. Yeah, Walai well, just... It's just no sneak attack. Oh, there's no sneak attack, okay. Remove the one... Which one was sneak attack, oh my god? Ang um, 18. Ah, remove it, 18. Yeah, remove it, so 17, 17 16, 16, and then... 33. 
uh, and then roll wisdom against Kuan being yeah. feared. I rolled 17. Do I pass? Okay. Yeah, you should be good. And then oh, wow. Kuan, sito ka na eh. Another DC for the wounding. Nice. Yeah. Uh, let me roll that. That's against the. Uh, what's the DC again? I, I think I said. 15 said. Okay. On save na 15. On save. Oh my gosh. They have plus 5 to pan. But I might fail. I might fail. I'm rolling lucky with this tree. Okay, that's a 10. I, I fail. Oh, fuck yeah. Let's go. Do I roll the D12 Ooh. now or later na? Uh. I think late. I think later. Later. Yeah. Yeah. later, later. Sige, also, speaking of the wisdom save, this one is banned, right? This tree. Yeah. Yeah, I think the 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 tree ants are banned. It was just Sasi Baka uh, that. Yeah. Uh... That means that I might fail the the save for your form of dread because I forgot the thingy. So. And I rolled a 4, so that means 13, so I am afraid of you because of your form of dread. Woo! Okay, he has to move away. Oh no, he'll get restrained! Yeah. Does he need to move away now, or... Uh, uh, on his I think on his turn, he has to move away. Also, can can I can I ask Pila to damage na nadawat na ko ganina? You got... 18 now? Yes. Okay, sige, sige. I'm just clarifying. I, I, did, I forgot that Form of Dread has temp HP. I just needed to recalculate everything. Pero I'm good na. <coughs> and okay, go next on. is... Uh, yeah, next for me. Harlan's turn. Uh, Harlan is going to... Quick question. If I cast Dispel Magic, would it dispel the roots that are holding us? Ooh. I like that idea. Hold on. Let's let me check the spell magic to see if I think from what I hmm choose magical effect within range. Any spell of on the target. Punch. Huh. Any magical effect within range and then any spell of oh, third no. level. Yeah. Any magical spell within range? Does that f does that like fuck with uh, like Homer's thing? Hmm. You get to decide which one. Oh, okay, magical, okay, okay. Magical effect, yeah, I think... Yeah, because it says here, choose any magical effect within range. So you have a choice, I think, to choose any magical effect that... Okay, you know. cool. So, yeah, I, I think as long as you specifically choose Entangle to go away, then, yeah. I'll okay. say, yeah, it's done. Uh, Harlan is going to play a few... Um, notes on his lute, um, yeah. but strangely, in the cinematic, it's going to sound like "Break My Soul," um, and then it's oh it's gosh. gonna cast a spell magic. <laughs> I don't know. You did not get that song. <laughs> and so, um, it kind of like the his lute glows like in like a, a purple. And then it kind of like drains down from the loot, down his legs, and then onto the earth, and it kind of spreads, causing the um, the roots to sort of like shrivel up, so we aren't restrained anymore. Yes. All right. They're all gone. And then uh, I'm going to cast Bardic, give Bardic inspiration to. Is Homer very far away from me? He is right 5, 10, 15, 20. Yeah, you got it. Uh, and then he's going to do finger guns on Homer <laughs> for bardic inspiration. <laughs> Amazing. I don't understand what that means. Yeah, he just gives finger guns and he's like, you're a spritly young man. <laughs> young? <laughs> <laughs> That's what he wants to be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't think he's young, but okay. <laughs> In Harlan's eyes, he's young. <laughs> Age is just a number. <laughs> Oi. 
anyway, um, next after Harlan's turn is... Oh, now that the thingy is gone, do you want to use your movement, perhaps? Oh my gosh, I completely forgot. Yes, I would love to move away. Away! Um, five. I'm gonna go behind these guys. And then um, I'm going to use my... Uh, I'm just gonna be behind them. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. Um, next is the Darax turn. But you see some of the druids, like, anxious. And they start using their movement instead to go to the to the portal that's opening. So you see them 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Mm. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. This one will move and will provoke opportunity attack. Will you do it, um, Homer? I'm saving it for the lady, actually. Oh, okay. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And yeah, the lady will go and provoke 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So will you take it? Yes, I will take it. Okay. Go. okay. Giant ape fist. <laughs> Uh, this brings so many good memories. Um, I have an attack macro for it, so just d20 plus 9. Uh, d5 to hit, I think that hits. That hits, that hits. Okay, roll the roll. damage page. 3d10 plus, what's my strength mod? 6, okay. Oh, <laughs> 24 damage. <laughs> Oh my god. 24, whoa. Wow. Okay, uh, question, uh, Homer, do you lethally or non-lethally put her down? I think Let's I go. will unleash a properly lethally. <laughs> oh, how do you kill her? Um, very similar to how Satan did it, or no, not quite, because that was very violent. Uh, he, he's an older and gentler ape, he instead just smashes her to the ground, <laughs> and she, um, uh, like, blood splatters all over, like, the water there. I'm assuming this is water. Yeah. Yeah, so no. you see, it's, like, drips of red spraying across the <laughs> water there. Oh no! Okay. Oh no! You said you were a gentle ape. Oh no! You broke her spine and it bled. <laughs> Gentler Ooh. in comparison. You should have seen yeah. the last uh, episode of Tipping the Scales. That was brutal. That was violent. Ooh, Bira. Yeah. He was gonna gonna touch his own spine because he can touch it for now. He's like, ooh, oh, that hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Next is the uh, next is this other druid. He's going to he's staying uh, in the fight and he's going to try and cast uh, uh, scorching ray. Three beams of scorching ray. The three of you. So yeah, this guy is uh, taking one for the team. Mm -hmm. So three beams and it's a plus four. So let's see if it hits. 3d20. Uh, this will be Eddie, Trandafira, and Harlan. So, 288. All three beam beams miss the three of you. <laughs> oh, we're no more bean, by the way. Well, and then oh. I bean. Because I dispelled magic, so I dropped the con concentration for bean. Okay. Well, magic oh, yeah, is yeah. concentration. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, it's not concentration, Oh, right, 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 right. So I, the bane is still up. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Cool, so, cool, yo. He felt like a fool um, shooting and missing you guys, so he moves a bit. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. You fool. And, uh, and then he sees the dead girl and, and suddenly felt sad through his gas mask, <laughs> which is somehow more. <laughs> Regret. Yeah, sadness. Okay, next the Sotiri's turn. And, uh, but however, a after you guys, um, after, uh, you smashed, um, <laughs> after, <laughs> after you killed this lady, actually, 
you notice the Soteri starts shaking a bit. And you see like mushrooms sprouting out of their corpses and they collapse, actually. Wow. Okay. They're put out of the equation. Dang, bro. Yeah. I'm gonna put a dead marker on them. Yeah. Re-dead. Dead. Double dead. Double dead. Yeah. It seems like it wasn't necromancy that was used on them, it was druid magic of some sorts. Cool. All right. Or it's dark that dark. girl somehow. That's it a was, coincidence. With that lady, yeah. When you killed her, I was like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> so the Soteris are out of the combat initiative. And yeah, uh, the portal is still opening, and uh, you see something. Something. Peering through the blackness, what? through the darkness. Yeah. Split. What is? What is? Ew. Ew. What is? Hoi! 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 On some banana. Hoi! Oh my god. What is that? It's what? an eyeball. I mean, it's an eyeball, but hoi! Yeah. Be not afraid. Proceeds to be afraid. Oh my it's god. It's an eye. Ew. You're seeing an eye. And Ew. for some reason, for some reason, that eye is staring right at you as well, trying to fear it. Seem to notice you among the chaos of the crowd. Wow. Yeah. Oh, what is this? What is that? I lo I look at it back. <laughs> <laughs> you see a hand waving high. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. That didn't happen. <laughs> Uh, it's an ally. Okay, though. top of the round. Eddie, you're not restrained. Let's go. Yes. Let's, let's go around. Eddie's not, not restrained anymore. He's like, finally. And then he yeah. taps his boots together, activating boots yeah. of speed, doubling his movement. He can now move up to 180 feet. That's me. And then he bends down like a uh, you know a track and fielder Olympic about to runner. up yeah, yeah about to sprint. Yeah. And he sprints. So this is yeah. his route. So that's uh, oh shit. This is his route DM. Um, so that's five, mm -hmm. and then he goes all Don't the way. Don't he hit Fira and Harlan? Or oh, no? that's true. That's true. I have to go this way. Uh, I'll go this way instead. Uh, so Very that's nice. Five, ten, and then he'll go this way. Boom. So let me check the distance of that. So that's oh, five. Shit. So that's five, ten, uh, ninety-five. So he, and then he'll come back down. He'll come back down from there. There are no more Sotiris, right? Yeah. Uh, and then 75. I he doesn't want to end up like in the middle of all the of all the shenanigans that's over there. So he's yeah. gonna come back all the way like here. 80 like there to hit this other trend. So that's, okay, 5, oh. 10, 95, 95 plus 75 is, oh my God. 95 uh, plus 75 is 100, 170, and then, I am speed. he'll, and then he'll end his turn, like, going back here, this way. <laughs> 10. Another 10 boom so you guys see him uh so you guys see him bopping his head somewhere after midnight in my wildest fantasies and then and just a green flame uh, trailing uh behind him uh, I'll do this last last instance later, DM. But oh. all the creatures that he whizzed pa ba past, they will take uh -huh. fire damage. 
Nice. Uh, no saving throw, no whatever. This just happens. Yeah. This is double for the treants because they're vulnerable to fire. Let's go. So oh, let's go. Uh, I'll do the first treant first. So okay. that's double third gear. And then I'll do the <laughs> the four druids. One, two, three, four. And then I'll do the last treant twice. One, two. Okay. Uh, yeah. Shit. Uh, I'll do the mass later, and then while yeah. while Eddie is over there, he takes his kopesh, yeah, and does two attacks on this uh, treant. A normal oh. attack first, exclamation mark a space kopesh, kopesh. Uh, fifteen to hit. Does that hit or it misses? I think. I think... Oh shit, this is uh, their natural armor 16. I'll use a wishbone. Nice, that hits then. Cool, yo. And then I will do... Oh, this gets added with a psionic damage from uh, Corpo... the Corponi yeah. Kopesh. Kopesh of Corponi. Yeah. Psionic yeah. damage. Cool. Oh. And then I'll do an extra attack with the cantrip Green Flame Blade. So another Kopesh. <laughs> uh 27 no. to hit <laughs> that hit uh and then another psionic damage instance and then my sneak attack no okay let's do the math <laughs> okay sheesh let's look oh shit okay um this is ridiculous Okay, so, uh, first Trent, this one, yeah. gets 17 plus 17 damage, is 34 damage, bringing, okay, 34. It, bringing it up to 67. Okay, I'm updating yeah. that. Ed, yeah? By gotcha. the, way, how, the way that vulnerability works is that you roll once, but it's doubled. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's 17 that doubled. Be better. Uh -huh. It's still the same, 17 doubled, because I rolled both still 17. Uh, okay. <clears throat> and then this one, the first gas mask dude, gets 8. Yeah. 8 damage. Okay. 8, uh, got it. This next gas mask dude gets 9. 9 oh. damage. And this druid up top. Gets eight damage. Oh my god! And then this one, this druid here, gets ten. Ten damage. Oh and god. then we go to the trent here, following the rules of the double, the vulnerable damage. That's ten doubled yeah. is twenty, so he's twenty-seven. And no. then I do my kopesh and everything, so that's thirteen. Plus four psionic, plus seventeen. Uh, eleven plus another psionic <laughs> four, plus seven doubled. Big. I no no no. That sneak attack seven. Oh, I didn't Ooh. roll my fire damage. My dancing flame. So hang on, dancing flame. And this gets doubled. Seven oh. doubled is fourteen. Uh, this guy takes a total of 53 damage. Uh, oh, am I correct? My. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Wait, wait, wait. Kopesh. Kopesh. So that's 13 plus 4 plus 11 plus 4 plus 7 plus 7 and plus 7 again is 53 damage on top of the 27. He's oh. brought up to 80 damage total. Eight. Yeah. yeah. And then... Uh, Eddie is gonna move backwards re here, not provoking attacks of opportunity because yeah. of Ashardalon's stride and the mobile feat. It's it's all redundant, mm -hmm. and he ends his turn there. So you guys just saw vzz, flames, vzz, and then the green flame blade, vzz, vzz, and he ends his turn there, vzz, and then he rises, vzz, still burning, and you know like sizzle. Vzz, all right, 
That's... And when you do that, the treant that got 80 damage burst into green flames and collapses. Excellent. Oh shit. 10 plus 8 plus 9. I just want to calculate how much damage I did total because this is yeah. this is ridiculous. 8. This is, this is what we all... This is what I, we set up for. <laughs> what was the original HP of this guy? I forget. The uh, 67? It was, like, uh, it was like 20. I genuinely forgot. Ah, it's okay. No, it, it was... 67 minus 34. 33. 34. Yeah, this he... Is some, <laughs> this is some demon slayer shit, you know? <laughs> Eddie did 149 damage spread across 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 targets. Ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Alright! Wow. He's got 180 movement speed. <laughs> Ah. ah, let's go and end turn the <laughs> Okay. Sheesh. You just see a streak of small green flames from where he ran, you know? This yeah. is, uh, yeah. The, the droids are <laughs> too stunned to speak, you know, from what happened. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Very, yeah. And, uh, up next is Homer's turn. Use the power of the monkey. <laughs> Use the power. The, mo the power of monk hair. Right, yeah. So there's a fire trail left behind. And with that, the fire trail is going to make me even more menacing as I approach. <laughs> yeah. You're giving me Scar jumping through the fire from Lion King, you know? Ooh. But monkey. A uh, raft, so that yeah. I can kind of block their path and also be closer to the hags. Can I end my space here? I measured it with measuring tool. Where are you on? Exactly. Now? 40 feet away from my position a while ago. You. Yeah, if All I right. could jump, then I would jump too, because I'm an ape. Okay. <laughs> right. Very bold of you to come close to the black hole, you know? <laughs> I'm I'm an ape. I I don't it's register okay. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty, so here we go. Um, I get to do two fist attacks. Okay, the two fist attacks are going to happen to the dude my right. This guy. Okay. I mean, he might die go. in one hit actually. So let's do this one by one. <laughs> let's right. go. D twenty plus nine. Uh, 21 to hit? That hits! Alright, our 3d10 plus 9. Plus 9, right? Oh no, plus 6. Plus 6. That's 3d0. Lol. Because 3d0. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, 20 to hit. Uh, 20 damage, rather. Ooh, that brings her up to 28. Do you. Is it a lethal or non lethal takedown? Still an ape, so it's still a lethal takedown. So oh, this time, man. instead of smashing downwards, still making his fist do an uppercut, Ooh. hugging from oh. the ground, so some water and dirt is like coming along with him. Yeah. And with yeah. that, he's like, it's kind of like a shockwave, and then he's uppercutting it, and then the thing is like ragdolling to the other side of the pond. Wow. Yeah. When nature turns against you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, and then that was the first attack. Second attack to the 10 damage one. Oh, okay. Rd20 plus 9 to hit. 27. Wow, dude. Okay. Alright. All right. Will you kill it is the real question. I think so, we'll see. 21 damage, oh my gosh. Sheesh. 21. It's, it's a lethal takedown, I'm guessing, so... <laughs> Man. How do you? Okay, so that one was like an uppercut, and with the same momentum, he... Like, his hand is in the air right now, he back... Backhand, like, swipes him, and then he... Wishes across the water some more. Yeah, he, he wishes. Whoosh. Yeah. yeah dude. 
Alright, that was my two attacks. Uh, I can't do a bonus action as an ape, unfortunately, so that is it, I think. The gas mask druid is scared. He's afraid. Scared. <laughs> scared. Yeah. Uh, at the end of my turn, I scream at his face as it's his turn next after this. Uh, the next is the triant over here. He'll try to strike both Fira and Harlan. We shall see if I hit. 1d20 plus 10 for Fira. Uh... This is still bit with Bane, so I am going to see if a 16 will, this 16 will miss. So that's a 14, so I'm pretty sure I missed Trend of Fira. So, hooray. <laughs> Next is Harlan, we'll see if the strike hits. Whoops. I think, I think I'll miss this one. Unless I roll it. Oh my! God, I rolled a natural 20. Oh no. This is so bad. Wait, beat it, beat it, beat it. Maybe if you roll just as high? No. Okay, uh, not 20 is auto 20 hit. 20 will always hit, though. Yeah. Oh, uh, fuck, I forgot. Yeah. Very option to Sad. silvery. Oh no, you might be can too you, far, though. Can you be silver? Uh, can you silvery barbs in? Yeah, I can, I can oh, silvery right barbs him. Uh, no, yeah. Yeah, that'll work. Nice. Reroll. I'll roll a d20 then. Yeah. Uh, he'll look at you and uh, we'll just say... Uh, do I smell firewood? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Nice. <laughs> nice one, nice one. You get a wishbone for that. Yay! Oh, uh, nice. He rolled a six. Awesome, and then I will uh, transfer that to Trantafira. Nice. <coughs> awesome. And yeah, next is Trantafira's turn now. Yeah, you have advantage on your next attack rule. Yeah. Maybe use a Psychic Blade this time. To... <laughs> I keep forgetting. <laughs> I keep casting spells. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I can't wait for when Ronan gets silvery barbs as well, which he will. Okay, I swing 15 plus 2. Uh, 15 plus 2. Yeah, that hits. That hits. So, yeah, I will do damage. Do damage. Where are all the good men gone? Where are all the guys? There's this like video edit of like uh, Vox Machina fighting the zombies and with that song playing in the background. Yeah, <laughs> I saw that too. Oh Iconic. Oh wow, Third, uh, 23 damage so far? That's crazy, man. No, wait, you got 920? No, no, 23 damage so far. I'm seeing like oh, 13, 13 from the great sword, then another d12, and d3. Oof. Brings it to 90 damage. Oh shit. Ooh, nice. <sighs> that hits. I think with the uh, great sword alone, you already took it down. Actually, so <laughs> is it a lethal or non-lethal takedown? Dedos. I think it's. I think you'll all be lethal about this. <laughs> what 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 shall it be? Yeah, it's 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 like no, it's a lethal takedown. It's going to be disgusting and lick the curvature of the blade before hair flipping to cut it into pieces. Nice. That is what happened. You also lick the blade, which is low key unsanitary, but sure, it is 
cool and it died. But yeah, you do have your bonus action. Uh but then you're using a great sword with two hands, so how do you how do you throw your dagger thingy? Is that right, guys? Do you, you need a free hand to do like uh it depends on you, my dude. His form of dread has all the hands. <laughs> oh my god, I keep forgetting, yeah. He has all the hands, and technically, yeah. No, but it yeah. should be easy enough to let go of one hand. That's true, that's true. Yeah. So, so he can actually throw, but the nearest enemy is like several feet away. But he can move. You can move actually closer to hit the guy. Ropa, how far? Oh. Oh. I think Fira is going to do that teleportation thingy. Ah. Uh, okay. Yeah. The the psychic blade thingy. Part right. Oh, that's yeah. yeah. Oh, oh. Eighty feet. <laughs> once once Satori can do that, it's all over. <laughs> To throw ADV towards nearest to Tracy. What? We hate Tracy in this house, apparently. <laughs> if it's 80 it's plus 30 feet, that should get you up to 110. Let's see. One, ten. You guys really are like coming close to this black hole. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's a warning, guys. <laughs> Like, there's a voice in your head, you know, like, let's go near the black hole, maybe not, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> so where is Fira now? Uh, is he near... So I can drag them where? Uh, I dragged him here. Oh. Trying to get close to Tracy Mancat, so that's the closest. Okay. Okay, they're out loud. Okay. Is that your turn? Okay. Next is Harlan's turn. Sean there. Sean? Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I thought I was mute. Yeah. I was. I forgot I was mute. Um, Harlan is gonna stride up right behind Eddie. Um, and then he is going to. Who's closest? This dude. What's this yeah, guy's? This what's this guy's deal? Dude. Gas mask uh, dude. Gas mask dude. Yeah, the one who keeps casting fire spells at you guys. Got it. Okay. All right. So he is going to walk up to him, and then he's going to uh, sixty feet. That's cool. And then he's just going to start uh, whispering, you're a third-rate mage with a fourth-rate spell list. Oh, no. And uh, cast Dissonant Whispers. <laughs> right. um, so Wisdom Save. Okay, Wisdom Save, D20, and his was Oh, wow, that's so low, okay. He has like a plus two to Wisdom and he's a druid. He is a second-rate spellcaster. <laughs> uh, what did he yeah. roll? He rolls a four. Awesome. So he gets uh, 15 damage. Um, oh. Like you see, like he, he's racked with existential pain of like, am I a third-rate mage? <laughs> is my spell no. list shit? <laughs> Deep down, he's like, it is true. It is true. <laughs> um, and then he must um, immediately use its reaction, if available, to move as far as its speed allows away from. Okay, he will move as far. Yeah. 5, then 15, 20, 25, 30. There. And then that's it for me. I'm going to hold my bonus action for now. Nice. Uh, next is his turn, actually. It's the rest of the Dorok's turn, whoever is left. Uh -huh. And they're gonna be running. So, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Okay, so, so they're, they're fighting here now in the sky. 
Uh, next, the other will leave uh, no, and provoke opportunity of attack, so... Alright, let's do this. Okay, R... E20 plus 9 to hit. Oh no, that's low. 13? It still hits! Oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> oh, wait, no, wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. No, that doesn't hit. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, awesome. I'll spend one clo I'll spend one wish bone. No, it still doesn't hit. Do not bother. Okay, never mind then. <laughs> if I spend two, nah, I don't know. No, his it's sixteen. His AC sixteen. No, no, under. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that makes it clear then. So yeah, yeah that misses. Your turn, man. So yeah, these five spellcasters surround the the black hole. No. You hear, Fira. You start hearing a few. Uh, languages that uh, that are alien to you, but at the same time you catch a few words. You hear the words uh, uh, aberration. You hear the words uh, in the father of monstrosity's name. Those are the words that you catch during the chant. And Shit, are suddenly... They summoning the void? Suddenly, you you see a bolt of lightning strike all five sorcerers. I mean, all spellcasters, even the hags, and and the last like druid. The electric. This is a this is a cutscene, by the way, guys. So, uh, uh, the lightning starts disintegrating all five of them, and Tracy he starts kneeling down again. It's like not again, <laughs> and then. All five of them just get reduced to ashes, and suddenly you see this creature unleashed. Oh no! You see the beast of the void eh. is summoned into the island, and you fools have been standing close to it. Oh no! <laughs> oh. Oh, I am a fool. I'm an ape. <laughs> I, have oh, a, I have reason. But yeah, what happens now is this black dragon is fighting with Romeo, but he clutches to Romeo now. Okay. And what happened is that it keeps pulling Romeo into the into the void, and then. Romeo tries to keep striking lightning at the black dragon, but it wouldn't let go. And then he turns around to the rest of you guys and he says, like, plane shift as far as you can. And then suddenly the black dragon and Romeo Blightside are sucked into the beast of the void. Uh, uh. And yeah. Uh, you guys have a turn okay. before this beast starts moving. We're running away. And yeah. Uh, when <coughs> Romeo tells you to plane shift, you plane shift. So yeah. Uh, it'll be top of the round. Uh, Eddie. Okay. Uh, yeah, go on. Uh, does Eddie know who in the party can plane shift? Ah, uh, yeah, I will say Homer. We about it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, DM, I don't know if you'll allow me, but uh, can I, like, with my speed, like, zoom around the group and, like, just... Like when I when I go beside Trandafira, I I grab uh, their arm, one of their arms, many arms, and then you know drag Trandafira uh, to the party here, and. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, says to drag Harlan to us, we're all here. Really, but you're an ape. I won't be for long. <clears throat> I can lose concentration. Okay, 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 sure. Uh, I'll do that. So, so uh, Eddie's gonna look at Harlan and say, Hey, uh, Harley, um, 
uh, I'm sorry for this. <laughs> Go behind Harlan. And yeah. then lift Harlan by the armpits. Um. And, <laughs> and book it towards the group. <laughs> Boom, here. Yeah. And. Uh, Harlan's gonna be like, watch the hair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Eddie doesn't know like what 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 like <clears throat> what like uh, Homer needs, so he's still gonna you know do the same for Trandafira. Move Trandafira here. Which is like just a fire <laughs> circle, yeah. moving around, and to like grab the ape's attention, like like singe the ape a little bit. <laughs> And then yeah. Eddie's like, oh, no, uh, uh, turn, hey, turn back now. Uh, we gotta go. We gotta go." And... Okay. Yeah. yeah. Homer, it, uh, I'll make up uh, your turn. It's Nexus' your turn. So yeah. Yeah. Oh, initiative told the story, man. Okay, yeah. so lose concentration on ape. Uh, yeah. I become the old man once more. You turn back. Here you are. Yeah. There we go. Oh, no. I had my token like on the there side go. there. Yeah. All right. Then I'm here. I say, all right, we got to get the hell out of here, boys and girls. Wait, it's all just men. We got to get out of here, boys. <laughs> Five, 10, 15. And then we have to hold hands for this one because it literally says on the spell that we have to be in a circle. So. Oh, oh spell so. Friendship circle. Friendship circle. Eight willing yeah. creatures who link hands in a circle. Okay. Literally, we have to be in a circle. Okay. Right. okay. And then I cast... Uh, well, first of all, I have to take the attuning fork out of my hand. Out of my sure. pack. And the, the attunement fork that I uh, bring out of my pack. Uh, he's gonna go someplace familiar, the Feywild. Ooh, okay. Uh, he sets in his mind the orange, uh, oh my god, what was the name again? The Orange Blossom Fields. Orange Blossom Fields. And as he does that, he holds the hands of everyone in a circle. And the material component, as he incants and says, the spirits guide our journey to the other realms, and then he casts plane shift. All of us being affected. As you raise your tuning fork, you see Feywild colors that don't exist in the material plane start surrounding you. But then, the tuning fork's ringing noise seems to stop working. What? Feel a sense of panic. Uh oh. You feel like the void will consume you and it's expanding. It's expanding. You can almost see the darkness in its eyes consuming you. Yeah. You almost feel like hope is lost. And it you you just feel like, you know, you, you like it's like uh Darkness is about to consume you, and it feels like you're going to be trapped with uh, Romeo and this dragon. And then, all of a sudden, you were you were somewhere else. Whoa! Because you're now in the Feywild, and this is for revenge for scaring the fuck out of me and blocking strings when we were trying to escape from the mists and the shadow fell. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it feels. I waited for one whole year to get back at you. Know. <laughs> this was a long con. <laughs> this is the longest con ever. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> you know, nice one. I got you. But you, you thought you thought that you were in the orange blossom fields, but for a brief while you were surrounded by orange flowers, but all of a sudden the orange 
flowers wilted away and instead it's replaced by white silvery floors silvery flowers that flood the whole floor and you're not seeing this is a different place it seems like the Feywild was shaped all of a sudden into other into a, like another space another area and uh homer you see two figures standing in front of you guys and uh you you see a two two figures and you also see a collection of faces melted together uh looking down on you floating in the air the face is composed of like butterflies and and colors and lights mixing together melting on each other and yeah uh you see you see see these three figures and you see the the face just saying that it's about time we met again uh young homer have i met you before i mean hold on before i say that is any yeah. of this familiar yes um for homer it is familiar indeed You've seen these two women before. They stood in front of you in the courts when when you when you saw the 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 Fey courts granting you their uh, granting you the Fey world magics. You you noticed that these these two women were among the fig, the mysterious figures that that were standing uh, before you in your vision in your dream. Oh shit! Yeah, Can I say out loud then. Oh, are you the ones who look over the gloaming court and I forgot the name of the other one, the uh, summer court. Yeah, Salanthia says, summer court. Salanthia says, yes, child. However, we don't go by those names anymore. It's pretty outdated. And then the woman in the, the dark woman, Ezra, she says, Yes, we go by another name now. We call ourselves the Shining Cabal and the Shadowy Core. And I'm going to uh, oh, share with you the name of right, their. Go. Uh, so, so for the rest of you guys, actually, you've heard of stories of the what used to be called the Gloaming Court is now called the Shadowy Core. And what used to be the summer court is now the shining cabal, and uh, they they're still the same uh, fake courts. However, they seem to have taken a more, shall we say, modernized approach to go with the times of Darren. The shining cabal acts a lot more like a corporate group, really, and. The shadowy core, they're more in line with the, with the Mafia. Also, the Shining Cabal, they're the ones who are more open and more interactive with those in, uh, in the material plane. But the shadowy core, they're more private. They literally are called that because they do their activities in the shadows. And... As players, it kind of makes sense why Salentia is more open and why Ezra is more mysterious. So, yeah. But whatever is happening now, it seems to be a huge problem that the gloaming and that the shadowy core and the shining cabal decide to speak with one of their with one of the druids that they have aligned. So, yeah. Uh, Fira, I mean Ezra and Salenthia, they tell, they speak in unison to Homer, and it's like, young man, we have decided to show up, show ourselves to you because there is a problem. How can I help? And then, uh... Uh, the you you look around you can't help but look around all of you and they 
uh, you notice that the colors and the the colors of the Feywild keep changing. You also see pixies and other Feywilds. They're, they're surrounded in the place, but uh, to see all these like arc face surrounded in an area, they're all like amazed and they can't help but like bow, you know, at this uh, at this assembly of arc face. And uh, when when Homer, when you ask uh, how can you help, they tell you that all all three figures, well, all of the the core and the cabal speak in unition, and they say that. We have come to warn you of an incoming imbalance that is brought upon by another Arc Fey. And this What's isn't the name just, of this Arc Fey. This isn't just some simple problem that is localized in your island, but this will spread across Tyran if it's not stopped. And this Arc Fey. He has gone by many names, the father of monstrosities, king of hags. But his name that we know of is Golgotha. And he intends to conquer Taran with his army. I'm sorry, does Golgotha sound familiar to us? No. I mean... Not at all. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Alright. And then... There's Monstrosity's King. Alright. I say, I would be happy to assist. I don't know how to begin. The... It's on your help. Yeah, fear it tells you guys. That's what I heard near the black hole when they were chanting. So that's what fear it told you guys. And then, uh, uh, Homer, what was your question again? Uh, I told them that I don't know where to begin. Okay. And also, like, if there's any assistance, they can help me. They can provide for us. They will. We're pretty lost. <laughs> yeah, they will explain to you what they know. Uh, Salanthia, who's the more, who's the more expressive one. She tells you that we will tell you what we know about the Archfey Golgotha. A thousand years ago. Golgotha made himself known in the Feywild. We left him to his own devices until he tried to conquer the Feywild. He waged war with the Shining Cabal and the Shadowy Core. And then we banished him to a time warp. We intended to let him die there through time, through the power of time itself. But it appears he has found a way to try and leave his prison. And then Ezra is now the one who approaches and tells you it from what our spies and our agents know, it seems that he intends to use a tree. A tree that is called the Abrogate Arbor. Let me type that for you guys. Abrogate Arbor. No, Abrogate Arbor. Abrogate Arbor. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Ezra tells you, we do not understand the true purpose of this tree. We don't know if it keeps him away if it is the gateway to his arrival, or if it's something else completely different to his plans. But we know that right now he can't enter the material plane like the rest of us do. 
but I feel it is important to understand what the uh, the abrogate arbor does. And I we cannot find any information on our end, but perhaps you can. All right, and then, okay. Mm -hmm. Go on, go on. Yeah. So we have to find this, this abrogate arbor and do there. We, well, we, I want you to, um, I want all of you actually. Oh, oh, Fira is asking, what about that eye that was back there? What was that? Uh, the Solanthian Ezra told you what you saw there was the beast of the void, remnants of a long forgotten spirit. Even we forgot what it was. But do not worry. We know that the blight side man and the black dragon with him is absorbed into it, but. I am sure there are others that will deal with that problem. What you need to do now is learn about the Abrogate Arbor. And uh, I want all of you to do a history check for me regarding the Abrogate Arbor. Twenty one. Nice. Oh. Okay. Okay. So Oh, this is perfect that Homer learned this actually. Homer, when you were training to be a druid, you came across a few texts that you need to read to understand, you know, your 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 heritage as a druid, your vocation. And in one of the texts that you read, you read of uh, you read of previous um, arc druids and her other heroic druids throughout the history of Tharin. You read about a druid a thousand years ago during Pandemonium who was active, and uh, also Fira, because of your role, you also. Uh, kind of heard about these legends, but you heard about an ancient druid who once created a, a special tree to keep away an evil, an evil entity from the material plane. Uh, you instantly, it clicks in your mind what, what this tree does, what it talks about, because this champ this this druid she was she was an ancient champion of vida and her name was uh luna lee and according to the legends this champion she created a tree that was specifically designed to keep away certain entities from the material plane of Tarin. How this tree works, okay. Uh, I'm going to also copy paste my uh, my notes on how this tree works because it's very, very intricate, guys. It's very intricate. So, uh. Hold on, let me make sure I <laughs> I delete some spoilers on it. The chain okay. All right. So so yeah, this is all clicking to you, uh Homer. You're like uh you're having your uh it's a bit of a it's a bit of a realization. So the Arbrogate Arbrogate Arbor is an ancient tree hidden somewhere in Tarin, according to legends, specifically created to prevent certain creatures from entering a specific plane of existence. As the tree is on the planet of Tarin, it traces invisible sigils and patterns across the universe as it floats in space, creating a barrier that blocks entities from existing within this reality. 
the tree was created by the ancient champion Luna Lee. So, so yeah, uh, that's how the it clicks to you, Homer. You you have this epiphany of the, the, the abrogate arbor, how it works, why it's there, what's going on, and uh, Shit. not only that, okay, but uh, the arc face they tell they also warn you that. You have to find the tree before the season of warm wave happens because Hellface Hell Comet shall return to Taran. And Hellface Comet, uh, uh, Homer, you've seen Hellface Comet before 23 years ago. Hellface Comet has a 23 year cycle, it always shows up every 23 years in Taran. It first appeared in 1010 AP when the Starflower Isles was lost to the rifts. Yeah. The Pirate Nation's power is strong, as sure. Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> Don't be like that, guys. <laughs> but yeah, this okay. comet is, an, is, a, is a cosmic indicator of the time you have left before finding the tree. The tree was kept hidden on purpose because Luna Lee was like, I don't want any rando finding the tree and breaking it. So she made it hidden and she made sure that no records of it would exist, which is a bit of a deterrent to everyone, unfortunately, both heroes and villains. So, yeah. Understandable. That's yeah, like something Luna Lee would do. Yeah, and so yeah, that is uh, the Arc Feast now charge you with the task of uh, either find finding the tree and protecting it, or you know do whatever you can to prevent Golgotha's arrival, and uh, also. Uh, there's also a fun fact you also learned, uh, Homer, when you read the legend of Luna Lee, she was born somewhere in a landmass in the east of Maiton. And I see. the east of Maiton is, uh, the, the, you know, it's been a thousand years, the landmass has changed, but so there's you have a hunch that that specific landmass is modern day Skullduggery Island, you know? Just a hunch. Might be the right place to start. Find the clue anywhere that's uh, the that Lunali is a good place to start. Yeah, that is Lunali's birthplace, wherever the east of Maitan is, and. So, yeah, and uh, Homer, um, this is uh, this is when you have your epiphany. For some reason, fate and nature has led you to this island, and in this island, you faced a lot of challenges that made you a powerful druid, that enhanced your power over the circle of dreams. You met the right people that could help you and the right enemies as well. And now, uh, as a druid of the Circle of Dreams, you are now given this destiny to stop the dream of this evil Arc Fae from threatening this reality. So, yeah, that is your... Epiphany. That is what you realized as Ezra and Salenthia are charging you with this task. Yeah, and then it's like he it takes five seconds or longer to digest all that, and then he kind of like understands his purpose now. It took him many years, but it all makes sense now. And he yeah. says. Thank you for guiding me for all these years, Valentia, Esra, Faye. 
Yeah. I won't let you down. And uh, both Salenthia and Ezra actually present their hands and they order you, um, they tell you, young man, please accept our favor. They hold out the hand. Uh, it's up to you what you do. You either mag bless ka or kiss it. I don't know. <laughs> mm. It was very old style. He would probably kiss both of their hands. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> Well, no, he will kiss the hand. Well, Homer the hand kisser. So, yeah. Uh, you know, you're a bit respectful, so you kiss the rings on their hands, you know? Just, uh, yeah. And uh, as you do, uh, Homer, you suddenly, suddenly you feel like not just your physical eyes, but your mind's eye has been opened. Suddenly... You start noticing hidden passages in the Feywild, one that leads to the material plane. And then both Salenthia and Ezra say, we have shared with you the secrets of dreamwalking, for in dreams we walk with you. So yeah. Oh shit. So cool. <laughs> Dang. Alright, um, uh, I'm speechless as a player and also as, uh, Homer. Yeah, and, yeah. uh, as, uh, as you guys are speechless, the, the arc face say, we must take our leave. And then Ezra says, I need to watch over my charges. And Salanthia says, my daughter and her friends need to be warned as well. And the rest of the courts, they expand their faces and they tell, we will do our best to fight Golgotha's forces in our front, but you must do your parts as well. And then, uh, the, the, the Arc Fae, uh, their faces morph, and they reveal to you one last secret. Uh, the Heaven Sphere vials, all the drugs that they have been spreading across Taran, it was just revealed to you guys that people who take the drugs are mystically connected, right? Yeah. Yeah. They... Once that hive mind is con once that hive mind is created, it's basically creating a net over the planet. If if the right people are spread out across Tyran, it will create a hive mind that will cast a net over the planet, which will turn the planet into a beacon where Golgotha can find his way. So yeah. the drug isn't just some fancy party drug, it was a beacon. It was uh, a torch in the dark for Golgotha to find. So, yeah. And the Heaven Sphere Comet? It is... It is approaching because it is finding its way again. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh... They disappear, and they leave you in the Feywild again. And the place morphs once more, and you are back in the Orange Blossom Fields. That was the Feywild. So, yeah. Aw, that's such a nice picture, dude. You guys are here. <laughs> yeah, and... It's very realistic because the Feywild is weird like that. Yeah. It, it makes perfect sense. That's the Feywild. <laughs> yeah. So everything here both makes sense and makes absolutely no sense. Yeah. So okay. yeah, guys. Uh what what you gonna do with that um revelation? You guys can roleplay now for a bit. 
Oh, that was a lot of information to take in. Yeah. Well, I mean, Homer has a lot to digest, but his sense of purpose is now, like, renewed. So yeah. now he's more determined and to the party that fell. It's an interesting conversation with the Archfade. Uh, yeah, I never told you all, but uh, the way I gained my powers was an interesting story. Those two that we met, Abe, actually helped me out a long time ago when I was a child. And uh, I guess they showed me some visions, and it all led me to this point. I have to say... Took them a while, uh, but I'm happy that I understand my purpose. Uh, I know it's none of your business. Y'all just uh, wanted to get the Heaven Sphere drug out of the way, but uh, Big Eddie, author Harlan, if you don't mind, can I ask you to help me with this task? After all. If we don't have a Terran to live in anymore, then, uh, well, you don't have to worry about anything anymore. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I'm gonna. I got a lot to tell my brother. I thought, um, what we went through. Before that whole Feywild thing was already crazy, but now it's... I don't know if you'll believe me. But... Yeah, uh, what you said. If there's no Terran, there's... We, we got no business, so... Uh, you can, you can count, you can count us in. Gotta hear that, Big Eddie. Marlon? Harlan is, um, he looks like he's stuffing flowers in his pockets. Uh, he looks like he, he's been taking stuff from the Feywild and he's like, I need proof that I've been here. If I tried to explain to the wager organization that I was brought to the Feywild, they wouldn't believe me and thought I'd be, I've just been out drinking again. Um, but yes. <laughs> Harlan, Harlan when you were picking those orange flowers... Some of the flower, you just hear a voice saying, Hey, excuse me, you can't just pick us like that. You have to ask permission. Oh my god. <laughs> There's one that's like muffled in his pocket already. So, yeah. Oh shit. Um, <laughs> and then like puts it down back on the ground and like tries to like flatten it as if it was like a piece of paper, like straightening it out. Um, the flower's like, Oh uh, my god, come on, you just have to ask permission. We don't mind coming back. Uh, uh, I'll uh, just be really good at describing you. This is making me feel uncomfortable. This whole <laughs> Feywild thing, the woods, the Feywild, just nature, just... Uh, look, the wager will help you. Or right, Arlen, I'll bring some of them back, and then Homer asks very gently to them, Excuse me. I what is it? I pick some of you that, uh... People back in my home plane, I'll appreciate seeing you around. Well, okay, but, for you. but you have to promise to water us and also to feed us insects and, uh, uh, and we also eat, um, pizza, so you have to feed us that too. Welcome. Um, <laughs> I'll try to do that as best as I can. Okay. <laughs> All right, and then some of them like crawl up to you on your hand. The plants crawl. Yeah, they crawl. Ew. <laughs> this freaks Harlot out. <laughs> but then, but then when they notice that you guys freaked out, they're like, "Oh, sorry about that." Wrong legs, and then they stand upright. They change <laughs> their their feet. Oh, <laughs> legs. <laughs> <laughs> I guess oh, that oh. in the Feywild, everything makes sense and everything doesn't make sense all at the same time. Uh, 
And then, uh, yeah, you see uh, when the Feywild left, actually in the distance, you actually see like humanoids made out, made up of like all those orange flowers, just walking around and like doing cartwheels and stuff. You mm -hmm. know, yeah, okay. very weird place. <laughs> well, uh, Fear asks that, and I say, "Oh, well, first things first, we gotta rest up. I can't do." Did to bring us to the Feywild until the next day. So, uh, I guess we're gonna have to make camp in this field. Uh. All right. Uh. You guys can do one final. Uh. Hmm. Hmm. I will say. I will. Uh. You guys can skip, and uh, we can skip this part, and you guys can. Uh, I'll say that you plane shift back into into the Spearhead Club because I'm sure that's the safest place so far. And from there, we can do one final roleplay before we close the session. So, ah, oh, here we go, man. Yeah. So yeah, you're back here, back home, and uh, when you guys teleported back, Jed and Nikolai were like. Oh my god, you guys are back. Where have you been? Uh, we had a trip in the Feywild. It's a long story. Let's talk about it over drinks. It's crazy. Um, the news is everywhere. Uh, Romeo's gone. Have you, you guys knew that? Yes, yeah, so let's uh, talk about it over drinks, Nikolai. You're in okay. the retreat. All right. So we'll cut to you guys having a drink now. And, uh, oh, Sage is here, by the way. Sage came in and, like, uh, you know, uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's actually upset because his big brother slash father figure is probably dead-ish. We don't know. But we do know. <laughs> He's missing, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. That's why. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, after... After you, you recount, like, your tales to, uh... To Nikolai and Jed. Uh, they, they didn't, like, believe you initially, but then you show them, like, the living flowers. And they believe you. <laughs> And, uh, but yeah, they are very dumbfounded with what you just said. They're like, so you're telling me we have to avert an apocalypse of some sort from the Feywild? Is that what then, I'm getting at? And then he, Homer just replies with, uh, that's about sums it up. Easier said than done, right? This is... This is very stressful. And then, uh, it's so stressful that Nikolai, whose preferred form is this handsome dude, starts reverting. He starts reverting back to his, like, changeling form with a blank face and, like, you know, the creepy, creepy unsettling faces that, like, changelings tend to have. He's like... Oh, dear. <laughs> I literally... I'm stressed with this thought. I am not, we are not superheroes, we are not great heroes, we are a bunch of criminals, and and I am genuinely scared for my life and for my son's life with this, with this, uh, revelation. Oh, last thing, Nikolai, I'm not worried in the slightest, because, uh, no matter what shadows pop up, Overshadow. We are gonna overshadow that shadow. I like your confidence. And then, uh, S Sage, uh, comes up to you guys, and then... At this point, you've known him well enough that some of you guys are even trying to fear us. Some of you kind of understand, like, he uses when he uses Tyranian Sign Language now. And he tells you guys... He's going. He's behind you with this journey, but first he has to attend to finding Romeo. 
with, like the Skullduggery Corp score is fully occupied now with looking getting their champion back. So you know, you guys are free to uh find ways to stop this apocalypse while we try to get the best person to face this head on back. That's what he says. I say that's a worthy cause. We'll need all the hands that we can get. It was a great loss to have him missing, so if you can find him, it would be amazing. Yeah. And then... Uh... Yeah, uh... What happens now is, uh... And, uh... Nikolai and Big Eddie. Uh, uh, I mean, Harlan and Big Eddie. Nikolai comes up to you guys and says, So, I guess you guys will be having a lot to report to your bosses, I'm guessing. And uh, I guess it solves the mystery of the Heaven Sphere drug now. So the next uh, step is to decide what to do with the information we have. Is Har Harlan, like this whole time, um, is just kind of quietly smoking on a new cigar, but his hand shakes and it shakes visibly even more every time he sees the creepy plants. <laughs> and he says, yes, I have a lot to report to wager, but I pledge that you have our support when we have to in defeating <laughs> this. And then he puts his hands up in the air like thing. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> and uh, Big Eddie hasn't snacked ever since the uh, uh, the fight, mm -hmm. and uh, he looks like this now. He's oh, no. he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's lost he's lost a lot of weight, and he looks stressed and tired. I've only just put it together that like. Because he exerts, he does so much cardio, he needs to keep uh, eating. He, he needs, needs to, to keep, keep replacing it. Yeah. <laughs> That's the gag, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, he's like, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I got a lot to, to tell, Brother Ricky. So, uh, man, what a day. <laughs> Then, then Nikolai it. and Jed says to Homer and Trandafira. Oh, by the way, teach, teach is there somewhere. He's resting his knee. It got it got <laughs> shot. Yeah. Okay. And uh, he Jed tells uh, Homer and Trandafira like, if we need to summon back the rest of Overshadow, if we're going to face this together, and yeah. Maybe with all seven of you, we might have a chance. If Arc Face are vulnerable to getting stabbed multiple times. <laughs> well then, we better get our stuff ready then. Yeah. And then, meanwhile, uh, Trandafira, you have, uh, you were suddenly received like what seemed to be a voice in your head, but it sounds like a sending message. And you hear Asman telling you, uh, Trafira, I'm right here in, I'm right here in uh, Skullduggery Island. Why don't you come meet me in, uh, outside the Spearhead Club? He's gonna walk to the exit without explanation. Okay. So, Fira, you believe that Esmond, your um, special friend, if I, you know, quote unquote, uh, is messaging you outside the Spearhead Club and you walk out without explanation. Uh, but when you walk out, uh, the first thing you see is uh, first thing you see is the outside of spear of the spirit club, expecting to you know see Esmond, 
but you see uh when you leave when you cross through the door of the spearhead club you seem to end up in another space you look behind you and the spearhead club isn't there you don't see your friends anymore instead you see what seems to be this the a familiar background and then fira when you turn around again you don't see skullduggery city anymore you see your home you're outside the home where uh, you don't know this yet, but you'll be reuniting with your three, with your two other brothers, and the, in, instinctively you know you are back in Athendel. And then, Fira, you look around, panicking. You know, you 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 in a panic, you think of Esmond, and you see Esmond standing in front of you, and Esmond tells you. Don't worry, Fira. Don't worry, Fira. I will be with you every step of the way from here. And that's where we'll end our session. Woo! GG. Yeah. Left just after you said that's where we end. I know. Oh my god. Big ah. light in heaven. <laughs> hey, GG. GG, holy crap, dude. I'm gonna end this. Oh, such I'm a... End. Yeah, go, dude. dude. Yeah. Alright, that was Sin and Skullduggery. Uh, uh, Homer's highlight arc. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Much love and peace. Mwah.